Hi everyone, I just wanted to put my support out there for the HarperCollins union strike. If you do not know, the HarperCollins union uh, was one of the only union for a big four publisher has been on strike for over a month. As of editing this video together and recording this voiceover, it has been 47 days. They are striking for fair wages, better diversity commitment, and union rights. There are a lot of HarperCollins books in this video, and I just wanted to put this, not disclaimer, but the support up at the front of the video to make sure everyone watching is aware of what is going on. I've also included links in the description to where you can support the union if you want to. From what I understand, they're not asking you not to buy books. They're just asking that if you're going to be promoting Harper books, that you just mention the strike. Um, and I am a big, <laughs> if you, take anything away from this video, take away that I am a supporter of unions and I am a big supporter of workers' rights and I hope you enjoy this video. Welcome to The Teapot Reads, my name's Sam. I'm The Teapot, this is what I'm currently reading and I'm so happy to see you today. Hello and welcome, welcome back if you're returning, welcome if this is your first time here, I'm so happy to see you. And this is a long video, so this if this is your first time here, Buckle in. This is like a two and a half hour long, little longer video. And I did not know it was going to be this long when I started filming it. I should have guessed because I do have a lot of bookcases. I have the two you see behind me. I have one behind the camera. I have my classics collection, which you don't get to see in this video. I'll talk about that in a second. And then I have uh, three cases over here as well as scattered piles like that one around the room. So this is a really long video. I try to take out as many books as I can to show you, especially favorites and ones I've read. Whew. Buckle in though, grab a snack, plan for bathroom breaks. I did a bookshelf tour at the end of 2021 and I fully intended for this video to be up at the end of 2022. I actually originally had planned for it to go up on Christmas Eve as a sort of treat to everyone, including myself, uh, that did not happen. I actually got pretty sick and I am still dealing a little bit with the side effects of that. It was a combination of COVID and something else that I'm still in the process of investigating. I did intend for this video to go up sooner. I was recording it over the course of several days because it took about an hour per bookcase, which is a long time to be talking. You can kind of tell it was over the course of a couple days because I end up repeating myself several times. And I also, there's a couple books that appear more than once, I think. Most of them because I have multiple copies and just forgot that I had talked about the book. Uh, one of them because I moved it in between the days that I was filming those cases. So it is filmed over the course of several days. In the final section, my voice is a lot more hoarse and I tried to cut out as much coughing and throat clearing as I could. I was feeling much better at the point when I was filming that, but I was still sick. So that's why the voice changes. And that's also why you're going to see the audio kind of fluctuate up and down. I did my best to make it as, as comfortable as possible and not fluctuate super much, but it does, it does a bit. But because of being sick and because it was such a long video, and this took me about a week to edit as well. This I'm filming after the fact, obviously for this intro. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't think you can expect to see another bookshelf tour until like 2025. Hopefully by then I will have a lot more space to move within my bookcases. And by then I will need at least one more bookshelf, um, one more bookcase. I absolutely will. I'm going to show you in a second my sort of overview because I realized I didn't film that the first time when I was filming the tour. So you will see that. And I'm going to talk a little bit in the outro about what I think I'm going to do instead of another like bookshelf tour at the end of this year, at the beginning of next year. Um, so tune into the end for that. I also wanted to say this video is sectioned off into chapters. So if you have to leave, um, just take a peek at what chapter you've left off on. Or if you just want to skip to a very specific thing, take a peek at that. I did title them as accurately as I could, but I organized my bookcases almost completely based off vibe and books that I think should go together. It Authors aren't always near each other. Like I have the luminaries over here and I have Witchlands behind the camera. I have uh, Samantha Shannon is split up. I have Brandon Sanderson split up. I have pretty much every author that I have series in multiple genres are split apart. Or if they're in the same genre, but they're very different aesthetics, they're split apart because it is aesthetics, it is vibes, it is what I am feeling books go together like. That is how the bookcases are organized. So the chapters are as descriptive as I can be. Some of them are spot on, like my 
little mystery thriller pile that's exactly what you're seeing when you get to that section but when I talk about like bookcase one being all fantasy it is but there's probably things that people would consider exceptions on there and it's YA and adult fantasy mixed on the same shelf next to each other across the board and yeah just expect that for all the chapters I made them as accurately as possible but they are not perfect but definitely skip ahead if you think one is going to be more interesting than the other. All of my bookcases come from Ikea so my classics bookshelf which you don't see in this video let me talk about that real quick. I keep my classics bookshelf at the foot of my bed in the winter because I like to have my bed up against the window. Once it starts getting warmer I move the bed so that there will be room for the air conditioning unit once it gets ridiculously warm. Until then though the bed kind of covers about half of the classic section actually a little more than half and it is just a pain to show and I really want to give the classics collection its own video. That will definitely be posting later this year once it gets a little warmer out. You don't see that. That is a cubby system. I think it's called the Calyx shelves from Ikea. Otherwise I use Billy bookcases for the most part. I think one is an older model of the Billy and then two of them in the corner that you will see pretty much as the last shelves. I don't think those are Billy's at all. Those are the ones I've had the longest. I have had those since middle school and actually really fun. Um, there was one here and then one in the other corner. It hasn't really moved from the corner where it has lived and I would have all of my Warrior Book Cats books on it and that was the main series that I really collected and read and I remember taking like a step back. I was little. I was in like Actually, I might have been in elementary school. I might have been like in fifth or grade, fifth or sixth grade, somewhere around there. I remember taking a step back and thinking one day the shelves would be full of books. And yes, they indeed they are. But they are all from Ikea. And then the one you see behind the camera, I don't remember what it is called, but it is like one step fancier than the Billy bookcase. I love that bookshelf. It is probably the prettiest one I own and definitely the sturdiest one I own. When I do eventually get another space for all my books, I would love for that to be a classic shelf of some sort and get basically matching ones for my classics collection and keep the billy for the other stuff. Not that I think fantasy doesn't deserve it, but that just gives more like classics aesthetic. I have added shelves to pretty much all of my bookcases. The billies behind me, I just bought the official shelves that you can get at Ikea. And then the other cases, because they didn't make shelves for those sizes anymore, I picked or I made with the help of my dad. I did a lot of the work. It was so annoying because kept doing things wrong that would like fuck up the entire process. But they're made shelves and that's why a lot of them that you might notice are a different color slightly or they're like bowing in the middle because they're just not as strong. I don't actually mind how that looks. It feels very lived in and very red. My room also kind of looks cluttered in this video. It is. I've, I clean it pretty regularly, but I clutter up very quickly. So if you notice clutter, that is what is going on. I'm not a messy person. I'm just a cluttery person. I think I considered myself a big reader since middle school, uh, probably since like say third grade, because I don't think second grade I was doing that much reading I was enjoying it but I would consider myself a reader and actually probably from younger than that my parents both read to me especially my father read to me a lot when I was little and he made this really really ill-gotten promise that as long as I was reading he would buy me books and I held that over him until like college so that was a bad promise he made <laughs> worked out for me but I have been reading and collecting books since then and I still have a lot of books from my childhood they are just not in my room or really on display I keep them a lot in the basement or in boxes or even just like in my closet I don't really look at them I think about them and I would at some point love a place to be able to display them I don't think they'll ever be my pride and joy books I think I've really grown out of some of them but I would like to have them on display again at some point distant future probably. I, I have a lot of books. The space needed would be incredible. I have been collecting books for a very long time. The collection you see behind me and around me and in this video really started getting its roots into me probably in, I want to say college is when a lot of these books entered into my life, but it was sooner. It was probably let's say freshman year of high school. I had been reading some of these series for even longer, like the Shadowhunters books I've been reading for just about ever, Sarah J Mass just about ever, but a lot of the more adult fantasy and the YA fantasy is all 
pretty much high school and later but that being said I have graduated college in 2019 so and I graduated high school in 2015 so I this collection that you see really started we can say in 2012 and if we're being a little more generous we can say it started in 2014. I have been collecting books for a very long time my more hardcore collecting didn't happen until after I graduated college because then I finally had a job that paid real money. So I was able to subscribe to book boxes. I was able to start hunting down special editions that I really wanted. I was able to get more foreign editions of books that I really loved. And that's something that I keep up to this day. I also, if you do not know this, I work at Barnes & Noble. I have several videos up about that. So I get a discount on books and the Barnes & Noble employee discount is 40% and that helps a lot. The discount really is what allows me to purchase books. Without that discount, I really would not be able to afford probably half of the books I buy. So the discount does so very much for me and I'm very grateful that I have this perk to my job. And if I ever leave the company, I think that will be the most heartbreaking thing to leave behind. One last thing before I show you an overview of my bookcases is that not every single book is in frame when I think it is in frame and sometimes the camera is crooked. I am so sorry about that. When I was filming it, I absolutely thought things were in frame and I did not realize it was so crooked. I film off of my phone and I have a sort of handheld tripod that I can connect to my regular tripod, but sometimes it is misleading and it is very difficult to film on your phone and be like reaching around your phone and like holding the books up. So it was a little bit of a struggle. I did my very best. I'm so proud with the end result that is this video but I do want to warn you in advance this is not the most pristine stellar streamlined bookshelf tour you are going to see on this website. I do think I have a very impressive collection though. I have not counted but it is in the range of 1500 to 2000 books that I show you today and that's not counting classics. With classics I'm definitely at the 2000 mark. So I think I have a fairly impressive collection. So please enjoy. They are my treasures and I'm glad to share them with you. So I'll show you an overview and then we will get into it. Okay, so this is the first bookcase, which is right by the door. This is mostly fantasy as well as shadow hunter stuff. You can see there's a little more clutter on there because again, filming this after the actual case tour. And then I have some piles here and then some piles on these sides, which you will see. Behind where I normally film, I have my manga pile and then I have these two matching bookcases again, mostly fantasy um, and then the closer you get to the right the more folklore and inspired type books we get this weird between sizes case is fantasy and urban fantasy and then in the corner we have sci-fi and literature because those are the two genres I have the least amount and then above my bed here next to the plethora of water bottles I have my favorite books and that's pretty much the entire explanation we have Tank, by the way, and here is the um, the classics collection. So, like I said, you'll see this in another video dedicated to it. I love my classics books. I have read far fewer of these than on other cases, and then I have um, a couple stacks there. So, yeah, that is the overview of the bookcases, and I will pass this over to Past Sam. Okay, so here is an overview. It is all pretty much Shadowhunter stuff, except for a couple trinkets. These are Clance trinkets. I'm gonna take those off. I just didn't have room for them on the Clance shelf, which is there. It is full. Although I, I, I want to try to find a place to put them because I don't think I'm getting any more acrylic standees because uh, there aren't really any artists who make them anymore. Okay, so first for trinkets, and I'm sorry this shelf is handheld, but we have Cortana. I think this came from Illumicrate. And then we have the Shadow Hunter Codex. Little, uh, it's not actually little. This is quite a large um, book tin. There's nothing in it. And then we have the Mortal Cup, which came from Fairy Loot and is one of my favorite things. We have this teapot. Tea is always an excuse for a clandestine agenda, which I believe was Anna Lightwood, um, and it's really cute. Here's what that looks like. We have this is from Litjoy. This is one of my favorite things. It. It's low. It's from Strange the Dreamer, so it's not themed. I just needed a place to put it, or it's not like Shadowhunter themed. Um, and then we have this Pride and Prejudice teacup, or um, teapot, teacup duo, which is just gorgeous. Here's what it looks like in its entirety-ish. So 
sorry it's not a great angle and then we have my shadow hunter tarot deck and we have this trifold of um the infernal devices characters oh and i didn't mention we have will tessa and gem little acrylics right there okay so these are the illumicrate hardcover editions of um the El eldest curses i think they're called yeah um books one and two then we have the 10th anniversary american edition of city of bones we have the waterstones editions of lord of shadows and queen of air and darkness i do not have lady midnight that breaks my heart at the time i was like that's too expensive i can't afford shipping i could have i just didn't actually look into it so never got that one um then we have the waterstones editions of the eldest curses um, we have, uh, these are the Waterstones editions, so we have Chain of Gold, Chain of Iron, this is the Fane cover, um, for Chain of Iron, which is gorgeous and was a bit hard to get because they did not ship to America. Then these are the Fairy Loot editions of Chain of Gold, Chain of Iron, and the Illumicrate editions of Chain of Gold, Chain of Iron, and the 10th anniversary American edition of Clockwork Angel. Up here we have my Ark of Chain of Gold, and then we have the like collector's editions of Lady Midnight and Lord of Shadows, and then these are the Illumicrate editions of Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, Clockwork Princess. I don't know how I feel with them being so tiny, but they're also kind of cute. Okay, we're gonna do this shelf handheld as well, and then I think the next one will be on a tripod, so hopefully it won't be as um, uh, wobbly. So we have these two figures from Blue Exorcist, Rin and... I got these ages ago. I actually have not caught up on Blue Exorcist, but I was obsessed with the anime, and um, I started reading the manga, and I really liked it, but now I have to go back and reread the manga. Uh, but I, I do still love them both. Rin and Yukio, that's your name. Oh god, I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, so I just keep them there because I don't really have a shelf for my manga. As you will see, they're in a pile. Um, so they are here. Also, I'm so sorry. The shelves are dusty. I'm really noticing it now. I'm just a terrible duster. And then the other, the other like trinket I have on here are these, which are replica coins from uh, Mistborn. And that is a, um, um, a clip, I believe. We have, um, I want to say it's another clip and boxing. This is another <laughs> clip. <laughs> and um, I think these are a clip and a boxing from, yeah, from Era 2, so from Wax and Wayne. This is a platinum clip, which is maybe my favorite. Um, and another clip. <laughs> I have a lot of clips. I don't know why I got so many, I don't remember. Maybe it was just cheaper. And then I have five euro because why not? Those are from Shire Post, but I actually got them in a Kickstarter. Yes, I did. Okay, you can't go to move. So over here we have Ordinary Monsters, and then we have the Goldsboro edition of Ordinary Monsters. <laughs> looks very similar except it has the gorgeous edges we have elantris which i have read warbringer way of kings which i've read like twice words of radiance which i have read once arcanum unbounded and then we have the misborn books missing the most recent one i have read the first four i have to well, i want to reread and then catch up and then we have the gilded ones by namina forma for not this is technically an arc it came in a eh, fairy loot and I have two copies of this Woven Kingdom. This is a Illumicrate edition, I believe. Yes, this is the Illumicrate edition. You're wondering, Sam, why do you have two copies? Um, it's because this one is actually pretty damaged. Um, let me see. I don't know if it shows up, um, but there's like some cuts like in the cover. This is like the biggest one and then the back cover this is like folded over but it also when i got it it was like these pages were like this chunk were all like glued and stuck together and i worked really hard to undo it before i knew i could get a replacement copy so yeah i have the damaged one and then i have this one and then i have the niche and smile by cj marwild and this is the um fey crate edition i believe it comes in the slip case that is what that looks like absolutely 
want to read this really badly but have a not. And then I have the Graceling series, or at least four of them. These are not the original covers or the original editions I had, um, and I just don't know where those editions are, and I really have wanted to reread them and have them back on my shelf, so I just repurchased them. I really like the new covers, uh, and I have them in chronological order because I was feeling wild, and I read the books before, so if I reread them, I'll probably read them in chronological order. Okay, you're on the tripod now. Hopefully this is a little better. Um, I know you're at a slightly different angle. So here, okay. this is part of the Owl Crate um, bowl collection. This is the Gondor one. Um, <laughs> a human, the Lord of the Rings bowl collection. I love this one. This is probably my favorite, which surprises me. And then I have here, I believe these came from a Luma Crate. This is in uh, our... Aro we Aro we on Aro hmm a Dinana coin oh it's an owl crate wow I'm totally wrong um but it is a coin from We Hunt the Flame which is just really pretty really cool and so obviously I keep it near my copies of those books let's see first uh, we have Sabriel by Garth Nix this is the Daphne Press edition so this is what the Oh, maybe I zoomed in too close. There we go. This is what the case looks like. Fairly simple. This is Daphne Press is the like luxe editions that Illumicrate puts out. You're gonna notice a lot of Illumicrate editions. But this is the gorgeous cover and it is wraparound. And I do love that the title is not on the cover. I think there's something very cool about that. Otherwise, there's really not much in here that's super special. The end kit is I do adore. Um, and it does it's signed and numbered, which is pretty cool with the original art. But otherwise, it's just kind of a rebinding of the current UK paperbacks, which I do love. I think they're very pretty. Um, I, I love Sabriel. It is one of my favorite books. It is one of my favorite books, but I have not actually read all of Garth Nix. I have, like, I have not read all of the Old Kingdom stuff. Um, that is a goal for the new year. And I have another set of them because I just, I think they're very pretty and I'm very excited to read them all. But before we get into the rest of the Garth Nix, I have The Ivory Key by Achaya Rahman. This is the Illumicrate edition, I believe. Illumicrate. It's got, like, the edges. I really like, I prefer... The UK cover because it has like all four of the characters on it. I haven't read it yet though. Uh, Princess of Souls by Alexandra Cristo. I got that in a fairy loot. I don't know if I'm going to read it. I read her other book and just was not super impressed way back when I read it and I read an arc of the other one so it was ages ago so maybe I'll change my mind but I don't know. But then we do have more of the Old Kingdom. We have Clariel, Tercial, and Eleanor, Sabriel, Lyriel, Abhorsen, Golden Hand Across the Wall, and To Hold the Bridge. And once again these are in chronological order. Not these two because these are short story collections but these are in chronological order and these are the new UK paperbacks which I love but they're not my favorite editions. And then we have uh, we have the Gilded Wolves and the Silver Serpents. These are the American hardcovers. I might end up unhauling those. I will certainly be moving them for space uh, fairly soon because I have the fairy loot hardcovers. So that's what these edges are. And these, I'm not, I don't think they're the prettiest thing I've ever like owned or had on my shelf, but I like that they're cohesive. Um, because this poor series just did not have cohesive covers. I really hope I like them, uh, because I have invested a lot. <laughs> um, and then we have, over here, we have, there we go. And these, by the way, the books are kind of just, like, done by vibe. Um, and I think the shelf is mostly, like, fair, like, I shouldn't say fairy loot because they're not, but it has a lot of fairy loot collected things in here. A lot of collectible things. See. And we have We Hunt the Flames and Be Free the Stars. These are the U.S. hardcovers, and I do love those covers. And then we have the Illumicrate ones, um, which I love these covers as well. I think I talked about these in a video um, fairly recently, but it might have been on TikTok, so you might not have seen it. And we have the edges as well. I'm not super crazy about the edges. But I don't, like, I love them, but I, they're just not my favorite. And then we have the Ember and the Ashes Quartet by Saba Tahir. These are the fairy loot ones. So very pretty. Love that I have matching hardcovers. Want to read that soon. And then we have uh, Shelley Parker Chem's She Who Became the Sun. This is the Illumicrate edition because it's gorgeous. Um, 
really want to read that one in 2023. And then The Unbroken by C.L. Clark, also the Illumicrate edition. Uh, again, might read this in 2023. I don't know if it's as high a priority as she became this done. And The Jasmine Throne, if we're talking sapphic trifecta. Okay, this shelf is for some reason a little harder to film. It is like giving me some grief, so bear with me. Here we have another of the Owl Crate Bulls. This is the Rivendell of the Alvishwani. Very pretty. I am a big fan of yellow. We have the Never Night, or I guess the J. Christoph Mono Lime Art uh, Tarot deck. Um, this came from Obsidian Moon Crate, I think. Um, they're pretty. I don't know if it was worth what it cost, but I'm glad to have it in my collection. Then I have some little 3D printed characters ooh, that are falling off. These are characters from Empire of the Vampire that I made for a project I have been working on. Me. Ooh. <laughs> well, okay. Mia's Dagger. This is, I think, from Illumicrate. I could be wrong. And then we have a Nevernight inspired key. This is from Lit Joy Crate, I believe. I love their keys. I think they're very cool. Um, and I love how the blood like looks in this vibe. It's very neat. And then we have a plate with Rin on it from the Poppy War. This is fairy weight, I think. I don't love these plates that they do, but I have to put them somewhere. So I put them on my shelves. <laughs> And then we have a bust of Lila Bard. This is my favorite thing Illumicrate has ever put out. I think it is just the coolest thing to have on my shelf. And I want them to do it for so many things. <laughs> just more busts. I imagine this is fairly expensive, though. This is, I think, from Owl Crate. It, 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 there's a toothbrush in here. I just think it's cool, like, the design of it. I'm never going to use this toothbrush. I kind of hate when they send toothbrushes. And then these I got at a little bookstore. If you saw my Galena um, vlog, it was the bookstore there. And they're paper clips, but they're old fashioned paper clips. So, whoop, they look like that. Um, I would like to use them as bookmarks because it's side over. And it's in this like little like fake match case thing, which is really cute. So then we have The Art of Prophecy by Wesley Chu, The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart, two editions of The Final Strife by Sara Ala Arifi Arafi. Um, this is the Goldsboro edition. It comes in a nice little case. Um, that's what it looks like underneath. I have not read any of those books that I just mentioned yet. Maybe it would be better if I just meant, like, point out the ones I have read because... I feel like there are fewer of those. Um, we have Silver Under Nightfall by Rin Chepeco. This is also a Goldsboro edition. This is possibly my favorite book of the year. So this was phenomenal. This is obsessed. I think about it daily since I finished it. We have the Nevernight trilogy by J. Christophe. These two are Illumicrate hardcovers with the blank edges. Um, and this is just a regular hardcover, but I really wanted the matching hardcover set. And then this is one of my, so I love the Night Angel trilogy by Brent Weeks. And oh my gosh, there's going to be a new book finally. Um, this is the matte black edition. It is the 10th anniversary special edition bind up. It is so cool. I love that it's like so dark that you can only see like the words if the light catches it. Very, very cool. I will probably reread these in anticipation of the new one. And then I have the little novella, The Perfect Shadow, uh, which I have not actually read, I don't think. I have the Poppy Boy Trilogy by R.F. Kwong. These are the Illumicrate editions. And then I have the Blade itself. Then we have the Devabad series by S.A. Chakraborty or Shannon Chakraborty. I believe she's going by Tanya now. Um, City of Brass, Kingdom of Copper, Empire Fold. I love these so much. They were so good. Absolutely addicted to them when I was reading them. This came in an Illumicrate. It is a Rosie Thorns paper craft. And I do also have an arc of River of Silver. This is how I read the book. Um, I have a full review on the series. Then I have the Illumicrate uh, an Anniversary Special Edition 
of the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy. I... They're pretty. <laughs> They're pretty. I have more editions of this series. You'll see. I just have to get to that pile. Then this is what I would consider probably the most colorful shelf I have on here. Um, I don't have as many trinkets. We've got another Owl Cart Bowl. This is the Hobbit one. It's got the Shire in there. This is my second favorite one. It is so pretty. Love the Hobbit hole design on the side. And then I have another key. This is a Shadowhunter inspired key. I just wanted it somewhere I could like easily get to it because I think these keys are just really fun. So I didn't put it on the Shadowhunter shelf. For other trinkets I have, um, this is not bookish related. It just brings me so much delight. It's called a long tongue creature. It... <laughs> I mean, look at him. He just, <laughs> um, he's cool. This was um, actually in a bath bomb. It made the water turn strobe. And then this is a fairy loot plate of Addie LaRue. In the corner, we have my Lumetier Chronicles by Melina Marchetta. I love these books. They're really, really great fantasy. I just, oh my God, just want more people to read them. Okay, we have The First Binding by R.R. Verdi. This is the Goldsboro edition. Then I have The Name of the Wind books in hardcover and uh, Flower Art of Silent Things is there. I have a hardcover copy of Game of Thrones. I do have the full series elsewhere, just not in hardcover. And then I have my Witcher hardbacks. I actually, the illustrated edition of um, the second one, the uh, second short story collection, which I'm totally blinging on right now, but um, that is actually in the mail and would probably arrive today, but I wanted to get this done. And then turning a little bit, we have my copies of Truth Witch in the original covers and then in the new hardcovers. Character cards from the um, most recent book, Witch Shadow, which I'm not caught up on this series. I, um, where did I leave off? I think I only read the first two, but I absolutely adore the first two and am looking forward 100% to getting back into this series. Um, as for books on the shelf I have read, I have read The Last Witch, Game of Thrones, all of the Name of the Wind trilogy, and the Lumetier Chronicles. The first binding is something I highly want to read in the new year. Okay, so this shelf is slightly double stacked, um, trinket wise. Let's move, first of all, <laughs> let me move this. Trinket wise, we have this. This is the Dwarvish One Erebor. So I do have all four of them, which I love. And then I put it on this little trinket tray of Medusa because I actually think it's kind of really ugly. So back here we have a lot of Goldsboro editions. We have the Collarbound, the Gauntlet, and the Fist. Beneath the Hand of the Sun King, the Garden of Empire. And then we actually have this Grim Oak Press edition of Tail Chaser's Song, which is very pretty. Um, and it does have illustrations throughout. So here's just an example of the illustration. I have not read Tail Chaser, Tail Chaser Song. I actually, so I, I do want to read it. But I actually purchased it in the hopes of then purchasing Ted Williams' other books as they were coming out. But then I didn't ha have money when they released them. So that didn't happen. Um, but no regrets. I think it's a gorgeous book. The Justice of Kings by Richard Swan. Age of Ash by Daniel Abraham. And then this one I will probably unhaul at some point. This is Among Thieves by MJ Kuhn. I just like this. I think it's pretty. But I don't feel the need to keep this one. I will probably be getting rid of it. Then in this like first area, um, I just needed to put these somewhere and I want them on display. So we have Jasmine Throne and Oleander Sword by Tasha Suri. These are the Illumicrate editions. The new paperbacks of the Dandelion Empire by Ken Liu. I haven't read any of these. This series, I don't know when I'm going to get to it. They're big. They're bulky. These two will definitely be in 2023 if not sooner. I'm super excited. And then we have the Illumicrate special editions of Gideon the Ninth, Harrow the Ninth, and Nona the Ninth. And I'm not going to show you all the under the dust jackets so that you don't get spoiled if you're interested. But this is kind of what they all look like underneath. And they are gorgeous. I absolutely adore these. And then back there, well, actually, let me show you this thing first. Oh, that's a book in. This, I got it at um, the last Comic Con I went to. It is a squonk. <laughs> I feel the squonk so much. And then behind it, I have the Pope Lick Monster, which I got because um, actually my dog, he loves carrying shoes around. It's his favorite thing. But the squonk in me, we vibe. We vibe hard. 
and I do put it on top of this calendar that I kind of forgot about but I like this so then these are not hidden because I dislike them these are hidden because I love them but because I don't reach for them that often we have um, my Robin Hobb books I love Robin Hobb she is probably my favorite fantasy writer I think she's just super talented we have assassin's apprentice royal apprentice assassin's quest ship of magic mad ship that is all i have read i'm going to actually be starting ship of destiny next it's my next read body reading it with a friend and then fool's errand so that i can leap into that series when i'm ready and then i have the illustrated editions of the farseer trilogy and then over here those are the folio society editions they're very heavy i'm sorry i'm not going to be bringing them out for you but they are very pretty and i strongly recommend it and then here unrelated but similar to the squonk, I just vibe. This is the anxious axolotl. And yeah, I vibe hard. I really want to bring it to work. Um, but I want to... I don't... I, the desk I use at work is like a shared desk. So I'm kind of waiting until I have a more permanent... Like, this is for sure the space you'll be working out of. Okay, this final shelf. I'm going to apologize now. The angle is probably not great. Um, I... I'll do my best to take stuff off. <laughs> so let's start with this corner. We have this Pikachu because I thought it was cute and I, you know, still think he's cute. I don't really have a better place for him. I have this dragon um, statue. I don't remember where I got the dragon statue from, but he's very heavy actually. And he's got the one ring around his neck. This is actually too small for my finger. We have right here, this is the toilet bound. Ooh, things are falling. The, <laughs> the Toilet Bound Hanukkah Cocoon art book. I love this because I love this series. So, big fan. And I like to face it out because it's pretty to look at. This is a membership card to something. And then I have, um, ooh, these Buckingham Palace Platinum Jubilee. I actually bought those like right before she died. Um, I, they showed up at work and I was like, this would be cool to just own. And I bought a couple for um, family as well. Um, yeah, I don't know why we got them at work, but yeah, these are just some calendars that are actually probably garbage now as well. Tucked in here to straighten it out. We have this, it's Thisbe. This is from the Scorpio Raises by Maggie Steve Otter, and it's actually quite flat now, so I should get a frame and put it up because I think it's pretty. And then I have Biblio Style. This is something if you know anyone who is a big book collector and just wants like inspiration, the this is just a cool, cool book what is tucked in here oh my god i was looking for that um it is just a cool cool book it's got like some writing on it it's like a home decor book but it's just books and rooms with books and it's just a very cool love it so in this very tight corner um these are uh, literary magazines that i worked on um i don't actually think i worked on all of them i worked on Oh, maybe these are just the ones, because I have some other backlists. Yeah, I guess this would be all of them. Um, so I did this at school, and uh, they're just really cool. This is my favorite cover that we did. I love that one. Um, yeah, very cool. Then over here, tucked in, we have Icarus and the Sun by Gabriel Piccolo. Um, the Art of Heikala. I'm not going to pull all of these out, I don't think. This is really pretty. It is sort of a how-to book and an art book. Mysteries of the Unexplained. This is published by Reader's Digest. It has got, like, articles in here of weird, unexplained things. Um, Arthur Spiderwick's Field Guide. I love this book. It is just one of my favorite books. I own and probably always will be. It is precious to me. That is so cool. Um, yeah. I was really into these like fake field guides as a kid though. Um, we have the practical guide to dragons, the practical guide to dragon riding, and the practical guide to monsters. And then this is another one that I loved as a child. I was obsessed with it. This is how to raise and keep a dragon. This is by um, John, John Topsell. I don't know if that's a real person, um, but it, it basically like walked you through as if you had like a, a dog for a dog show. Closer is not helping. It is a cool book. I adore this one. I don't know if it's still in print. I don't know if any of these are. Uh, then we have a fan art book for the dragon prince. This is uh, Echoes of Thunder. I've not watched the most recent season. I've heard it was, ooh, I've heard it was disappointing. So I don't know if I'm 
going to. And then we have the art book for the Dragon Princess, the official art book. I have here are some fairy light lights that I have to put out. Uh, then we have the World of Stranger Things, or Stranger Things World Turned Upside Down. I kind of got this more for the aesthetic of the book because it looks like an old library book, and it's very, very cool. And then we have the Hamilton book, Where the Wild Things Are, because I love Maurice Sendak. William Goldman's The Princess Bride. Do I keep, like, clipping in? I don't know. This is the illustrated edition. Or I don't know if it's illustrated, actually, or just, like, it is illustrated, kind of. But it is mostly... I'm not really showing you. It's mostly just like the storybook version. Like you would read this to a child. Blind Spot by Teju Cole, which is a very artsy type book, but they're pictures that are pictures you wouldn't normally look at. They're like the blind spots of the world. And then little like prose passages reflecting on blind spots. I read that for a class and was obsessed with it. Absolutely loved it. Okay. Then here we're getting into the arcs. I have more arcs elsewhere, but these are the ones that I um, need to read for the most part. Although I'm noticing now there's one on here that I actually just finished. So we have the Stardust Thief, City of Dusk. I do really want to read both of these. I don't have a finished copy of City of Dusk. That's the only copy I have. I actually just read One Dark Window. I didn't like it. Ordinary Monsters. I need to read that. Ease up. I will. It'll happen. Um, and I'm not even showing you the cover. Um, it came with this little letter, so I need to get on that. Obviously, I have more copies of <laughs> Ordinary Monsters. You sell them. Black Tongue Thief. I want to read that. Soonish. Uh, Notorious Sorcerer. This one actually just came out. A lot of these I get through work, or I actually have a pretty decent relationship with Orbit. Um, the Inheritance of Volcata Divina. Or Divina. I, this has been like a high priority for a while. I just haven't gotten to it. Um, same with the Book of Gothel. Kake, a Kaike by uh, Va Vaishnavi Patel. This one I will probably read actually soon. From the Light of Heaven by Tade Thompson. Haven't read any of those, obviously. And then back here, I'll show you the top one because I don't think you can see it. We have Ballad of Perilous Graves by Alex Jennings. That is also a top priority. It's just back there because it fit. Um, Certain Dark Things by Sylvia, Gar Sylvia Morena Garcia. Then we have The Pariah by Anthony Ryan, Age of Ash, you obviously saw I have another edition, as well as Justice of Kings, Wildwood Whispers by Willow Reese, Empire of Exiles by Evan M, or Aaron M. Evans, An uh, Arc of This Woven Kingdom, uh, Bundle Punk Bruja by Des Desideria, Desideria Mesa, and The Weight of Blood by, what is her first name? I can't think of it. Jackson. I, oof, I do know it. I do know it. Now over here we have uh, my holo- my cube from- Excuse me. I, um, my holocube. I haven't, that's not what it's called. I'm totally like blanking on what it's actually called. I'm so bad at like remembering names, but I, I do love this. It doesn't have, it hasn't been charged. I don't think I have a crystal in here right now, although I could be wrong. No. Not empty. One of my favorite toys. Ooh. And then I have my crystals here, except my yellow one, which is in my lightsaber. And then I have this thing. I think it's a light. I have some shot glasses. I don't drink, but I do love a good shot glass. This one is so cool. I love that one. I have a Hamilton one with a little crystal in there. Just a yellow crystal. And then I have uh, this one from Wales. And then we have the Addy LaRue calendar that came in a box. I don't want to say owl crate. And then these are dice. In a dice box. These are really nice dice. I haven't used them yet because I'm a little superstitious. Okay. And then over here, I'm not going to pull all of these things out because it would take forever. But I do have an unopened <laughs> box of Sandman trading cards, um, which I'm like waiting. I want to open them, but I'm waiting. And then I have Sandman, uh, the first couple volumes, the first two volumes of Hellblazer. I have the entirety of the Matt Fraction Hawkeye run, which is my favorite one of my favorite stories of all time, but also my favorite graphic novels slash comics of all time. I have the first three volumes of Saga, Green Arrow, Quiver, uh, an Over the Garden Wall volume. I have some individual volumes of um, American Gods and apparently a map of Earth, which I forgot about. So that's cool. 
tuck that back in there for finding again. I have the hardcover bind-up of the first American Comics comic collection bind-up. Um, I have The World of Ice and Fire, and we have tucked right here The Rise of the Dragon, which is the new one. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna pull these out. I'm so sorry. I know it's a bookshelf tour, but you've seen actually these books before. This pile back here behind these things is, they are my heart or my paperback editions of my Shadowhunters books. I have the Mortal Instrument series and Infernal Devices and Lady Midnight in paperback. And then here, this title that you're seeing, this is just a box. These are, this is a Red Rising graphic novel. And then this is a D&D book beyond the, the Wild Beyond the Witch Light. But that's it for like books over here. Um, you're gonna see even more Shadowhunter books in a second because we have these piles, so. <laughs> These, this is three piles. From this angle, you can only see two. And then you can see three. So predominantly, these are my Overflow Shadowhunter books. As well as this pile is going to be my Lee Bardugo books. And then we have some arcs. And then we have my Tracy Dion books as well, because I have a lot of those. And I think they go well with Shadowhunters. So Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. I'll be reading this soon, as well as Foxglove King. I have The Fairy Bargains of Prospect Hill by Rowena Miller. Miller, The Magician's Daughter by H. G. Perry, The Whispering Dark, which I have two other copies of, and The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy, which I have another copy of as well, Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed, I want to read this one soon, I have another copy, and She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan, who found my other copy, oh, and Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. I had all these wonderful arcs and just did not read them because I'm just, I'm so bad about that. This will have to suffice. This is the new Barnes & Noble edition, collector's edition of Chain of Gold. It's very pretty, but it gets fingerprints on it, so I don't know why they went with that. I have the Shadowhunters Codex, the Bane Chronicles, Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, Clockwork Princess, Ghosts of the Shadow Market, Chain of Gold, and Chain of Iron. Yeah, I've read all of these. Um, they are all first editions, I think, maybe besides Clockwork Angel, and my original three, or not my original three, but my hardcovers of the original three books, um, because I have been reading these in real time for a very long time and then the next pile here since i'm taking it down you can see how how pretty it is with the gilded edges i do love how it works i think well i hope they do the whole trilogy because i'd be a little heartbroken if they didn't all the stories are true oh you can't even see it here we go all the stories are true which mm, has just like the shadow hunters characters as fairy tale characters and like storybook characters. I love this. I think it's so cool. I forget where that came from. Um, but we have the paperback version as well. I think the hardcover has an extra story. And then I have The Last Hour's Calendar, which has Charlie Bowater art of all of our favorites. No, maybe not your favorites, but all of the characters. Oh, this thing too. Oh, I don't know. Tesla. Oh, okay. Anyway. Pile number two. It's getting close. So we've got um Legendborn. This is the Illumicrate just paperback they sent out ages ago. There's nothing special about it. Bloodmarked, which is the Waterstones paperback, my Ark of Bloodmarked, Legendborn and Bloodmarked Owl Crate Editions. That's it for Tracy Dion. I do have the Fairy Loot Editions coming. I will probably keep buying her books. I was disappointed by Bloodmarked, but I still liked it enough to want to continue. I wasn't like so disappointed. I was like, ah, throw out my stuff. No, it, it just, it was a book number two, you know. We have the anniversary edition of City of Bones. This one is the one that just came out. And then we have my hardcover. So City of Bones, City of Glass. Oh, City of Ashes, City of Glass, Red Scrolls of Magic, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, City of Heavenly Fire, Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy, Lost Book of the White. And I have it on the... the better jacket design on it. Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, Queen of Air and Darkness, and at the very bottom we have the like Language of Flowers book. Not a great angle, um, but it's just like Birdie Go stuff. And I have um, here a frog toy. It's supposed to sound like a frog. Okay, <laughs> just a paperback of Ronin Rising. Um, we have my original hardcovers of the Grisha verse. We have, this is the 
Illumicrate edition of Lives of Saints, and then the regular one, Language of Thorns. Then I have the Fairy Loot, Shadow and Bone Collectors, the regular collectors of Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, the Anniversary US edition of Shadow and Bone, the regular hardcovers of Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, and then the Barnes & Noble hardcovers of King of Scars and Rule of Wolves. And then, since we're here, we'll go to this pile as well which is my like middle grade-ish pile. Sorry for these like weird angles, but we have my Anne of Green Gables books. We have The Never Ending Story, The Westing Game. This is a copy of Little House in the Big Woods, The Green Glass House, which I really want to read soon. Letter for the King by Tonky Drocht. Spindle's End by Robin McKinley, another one I really want to read soon. Pinch of Magic, The Keepers, book one. This is a book from my childhood, which is why it's ripping. Moomin Summer Madness by Torve Jarnson. Winnie the Pooh, Silver Arrow, this is a signed copy, and Golden Swift by Lev Grossman. I love those. And then coming over a wee bit more, we have some of my um, children's picture books, pretty much all of them actually that are left in the room. We have There's a Ghost in This House by Oliver Jeffers, which I love this book. It is very cool. Um, we have basically, so we have like the picture we have the terms and then there's this like page here when you flip it over you can see the ghost in the house he's there so that's just really cute I love that then we have Margaret's unicorn this is by Bryony Mae Smith and my Brambley hedge collection which I feel like I have talked up a lot it is just super charming these are my um, romances. The genres of romance that I really like are historical or like fantasy, but like if I'm doing like non-fantasy, it's historical or it's gay. Um, that's kind of the other thing. The, um, I forget what trilogy it is, but it's by Cat Sebastian. These are okay. This one is the best by far. Two rogues make a right. Uh, Someone to Love by Mary Ballow. I haven't read this one, but I am hankering for good historical fiction and this one just sounds really good. I think she is the... Um, the illegitimate daughter of this guy, but he leaves all her all of his inheritance to her, um, kind of displacing the family, and it's about her. Um, Brave New Earl. I don't, I think I just got this one discounted. <laughs> Same with My One and Only Duke by Grace Burroughs. I don't, I don't remember what they're about. I don't remember what Lessons in French is about by Laura Kinsale, but I got this because it literally would stare at me. It was like the first book on the shelf when I turned into the romance section at work every day. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll just buy it. Then we have one of my favorite books of the year, A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. I loved this. It was phenomenal, full of angst and drama and just amazing. It was so good, but the, the, it was also so very wholesome. So of course I picked up Something Fabulous by Alexis Hall. I haven't read this yet. Then more some, some more Cat Sebastian. We have The Queer Principles of Kit Webb and The Perfect Crimes of Marion Hayes. This is technically an ARC, um, but I haven't read it yet, so I don't know if I want to get a finished copy. And then we have Mr. Malcolm's List by Suzanne Elaine. And I wanted to try um, Georgette Heyer, so I just got these old shades because I'd seen some good reviews for it. And I have The Siren of Sussex. And then three Evie Dunmore books. Um, she's pretty popular, I think. Um, I don't know if these are good, but I do love the covers. So let's go down a little bit, and we're going to move from the historicals real quick to this pile which is actually witchy romances as well which I quite enjoy but so we have Archangel's Light by Nalini Sang I just got this because it is gay I d really just wanted to support the idea of more queer paranormal books existing so I don't know when or if I'll read that Once More Upon a Time by Roshani Chakshi this is a, um, a novella that was originally published for Amazon I think I just think it's really cute Small Town Big Magic by Hazel Beck Witch, Please, and Boss Witch by Anna Choir. Paybacks, A Witch, and From Bad to Cursed by Lana Harper. The X Hex by Aaron Sterling, and then A Arc of the Kiss Curse by Aaron Sterling. Angelica Frankenstein Makes Her Match. I've actually heard this is kind of problematic and not very good, so I probably won't read that one if I am Holland. And then the classics, we have Red, White, and Royal Blue, and One Last Stop by Casey McQuestion. And then here are the last of the historicals. We have A Lady's Guide to Fortune Hunting by Sophie Irwin. This is a Illumicrate one, and look at how pretty that is. Like, that's stunning. I love that. And then I have Mr. Darcy Takes a Wife by Linda Bertoli. I, or Bertoli. I've heard this is actually very steamy. 
um, I might read this this month. It is chonker. Then we have my Bridgerton books. Mm -hmm. I hate Brid I hate these. I hate these. I I keep saying I'm gonna make a video about them, and that's why I keep them. But I think honestly, they're gonna be unhauled because I hate them. They're bad. <laughs> I love the show. I hate the books. Okay, and then we have um, next to these kind of matching shelves. Um, we have my pile of manga. It is double stacked. I actually have a manga collection tour you can check out. I will link it. I basically just have it organized like up at the top. So I'm currently reading Uzumaki, kind of. <laughs> it's a long story. Um, I just picked up Chainsaw Man's volume one and two, or two and three, I mean. Um, and then these two I've read in this recently. It's like Chainsaw Man volume one and Free Rin volume six is that the most recent but then blue giant through water kai no no actually through pun pun um are unread so that's where i keep my unread manga and then everything else has been read it's organized by series and in the back i actually have my hanukkah kun noragami blue exorcist uh jujutsu kaisen f the rest of free Ren. i think that's all that's back there um, there might be a couple others, um, but check out my manga tour for that. So then we're going to get into these guys, and I will do the tops of them. So that is going to be um, on a chair in fruit hand. But how do I have these two organized? These two for a while were like my pride and joy bookshelves. I still really love, I love all my bookshelves. I don't mean to say it like I don't. Um, so the tops haven't really changed. <laughs> lately I put like bulk series there and I'll show you that in a minute but we do have like trinkets and stuff up there and um I have it so it was sort of like the closer you get this way the more of like a fairy tale or folk tale retelling you got um and this side was kind of anything that vibed with that shelf as well it was like more fantasy spillover and then these guys are not necessarily books I dislike but they're ones I just I needed to save space so either they're extra copies that I didn't want to showcase or they are books that are kind of on the chopping block um, and we will go through them and I do put them sideways like that because it actually gave me like a lot more space um, and then of course I have my rosy thorn mugs this is not all of them that's all I own but there are more that I just never received because I wasn't a subscriber at that point so I will get on a chair and I will show you um, I think I think when I do it I'm just gonna go like this because that's kind of how I like designed the shelves when I did it and the flow I was looking at when I did it. Okay so lighting is not the greatest here either but we're gonna do our best and I'm not gonna pull these books out really because it's a lot. Um, so we have these are characters um, here's P.E. Schwab. We have characters from P.E. Schwab's Darker Shade of Magic series. These came in an Illumicrate and then I have these they're from like a Ghibli blind box. This is a T-Tin. I want to say it's from very late, but it could be wrong. It could be from a Luma crate. Um, Hafsa Faisal's on there. This um, is from Owl Crate, and I just think it's really pretty. And then also from a Luma crate, these are characters from Ray Bearer, which I haven't read, and another T tin. This is from as uh, Adeline Grace quote. Okay, so we have this tin that's Night Circus themed, which is very pretty. But um, as you can see, I can't really hold the camera and um, reach it. <laughs> and then we have this here, which came in a fake crate, I think, or a lit joy crate. I don't love it. I think it's, um, it might be Dazzlebod inspired. It's okay. We have the Austin Art series here. I just put it here because it's huge. That's really why it lives here. Um, I have a review of the first trilogy and I have not moved on with the series yet because I'm kind of waiting for it to complete. And then we have rest of my Sabriel collection. So this is the um, Australian anniversary edition and then we have the Australian covers because they're my favorite and then we have the American re-release editions the new American hardcover of Terceal and Eleanor um, and then we have two fake books from Fairy Loot which I think they're bringing back this year and then just a spare copy of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue because I have a million Here's a little bit of an overview. A lot of Sarah J. Mass stuff. She continues on to the next header, but this is got an Axie O quote. I want to say these are fairy loot, but oh my gosh, I've never looked at the bottom. That's really cute. I love that. Um, the last word, this is an Addie LaRue thing. I think it came with Owl Crate. Then we have the French editions of Enchantment of Ravens and Sorcery of Thorns. That's what the back looks like. I do have to take these down to show you what's behind 
um, back of that. Then we have a thur uh, thurible, I think they're called. It is um, from Daughter of Smoke and Bone. It's one of my favorite things I own. I have these two mugs. I think they're from Fairy Loot. This was Serpent and Thorn, and this was something else. I just keep them because they're pretty. I don't actually like those fandoms. Some more tea tins. This is Poppy Ward. This is just Sarah J. Mass one. We have Hunt and Bryce Candle, which I got because I loved book one. That's one of the only Harry Potter things I have. I love him, though. And then Toothless all the way up there. <laughs> so we have French editions of Schwab books. These have the Charlie Bow Otter covers, um, and these are just, like, pretty... I don't read French super well anymore, but I used to read it pretty okay. I have my UK paperbacks of um, Throne of Glass, um, a spare copy of House of Earth and Blood, my anniversary editions of these guys, UK paperbacks. Um, these are the Illumicrate dust jackets, which I would love to have them like face down on display somewhere, but I don't have the space. As you can see, I'm kind of like space is uh, something I'm constantly battling with um just across the board okay this is also going to be freehand I think the shelf below this I'll be able to get the tripod back out but I'm not sure so this is an owl crate tin I tried to get all of them I only got three of them so these are the other two they are darker shade of magic themed I don't they're not going to live here forever I just needed a place for them for now we have The Goblin Emperor and Witness for the Dead by Catherine Addison. I am going to be reading Goblin Emperor very soon, actually. And then we have the, I think it's the Blood Ear, Blood Air trilogy by Amelie Wenzhou. I have not read these, but I heard they were Anastasia, like, inspired. Like, that's the retelling. So kind of obsessed and want to read those really soon. I have the Illumicrate editions of Grey Bear and Redemptor. I haven't, haven't read those either. I actually, moment of truth. I've only read one book on the shelf, so it's okay. Judge me. Judge me. Um, this is the... Uh, I actually don't know what this series is called, but it's a fake crate series um, that they put out. They're very pretty. Honestly, excited to read these. I think they're going to be a summer series. The Midnight Girls by Alicia um, Jasinka. Jasin Jasinska? I'm pretty sure it's got sapphic. Then we have the entirety of the Temeraire series by Naomi Novik. I do love Naomi Novik. I have not read these yet. I was waiting for the whole set to be re-released. I do have the UK paperbacks, but I much prefer these, um, especially with the just gorgeous covers. Absolutely love that. I am a big dragon fan, so I was just waiting. I will read those soon. And then this is from Ray Bearer. Uh, came with the Illumicrate books. The only book I have read on the shelf is Magic of Blood and Sea by Cassandra Rose Clark. This is actually a bind up of two books, um, Assassin's Curse and The Pirate's Wish. I read them way back when I had a Kindle, so probably in like early high school or middle school. And then these are Magic of Wind and Frost or and, and Mist. Uh, and this is her most recent book, The Beholden, which I was really excited for, but found out it did not have great reviews. So I will read it, but I do not know when. I did love I loved these when I read, read them. I was kind of obsessed with them. So I'm glad they repackaged them and put them out in the world. Definitely not a series anyone ever talks about ever. <laughs> All right, moment of truth for this shelf. I haven't read anything on the shelf. So we have the first two in the Rem Remnant Chronicles, I think it's called, by Mary E. Pearson. I want to get the third one in hardcover. I'm probably gonna have to hunt for it. Um, and then I will read these. And then the next series is much more popular. <laughs> um, then we have Fable and Namesake by Adrian Young. I was super excited about these. These are the Fairy Loot edition, so they have different covers, which I don't love these covers, but I do like how unique they are. Um, but I read Adrian Young's adult book and was so disappointed by it. Then we have this gorgeous edition of Skin of the Sea from Owl Crate. This is by Natasha Bowen. I do really want to read this one. This is high on my list, but again, I feel like it's a summer book because Mermaids. A Fire and Stars by Audrey Colehurst. I think this is the first in the series. Sweet and Bitter Magic and Sophie and the Bone Song. These are by um, Adrian Tooley. This is the Fake Crate exclusive cover, which it really grew on me. I wasn't loving it, but I am now, so... Um, we have two of the Rediscovered Classics Travelers Along the Wall and Clash of Steel. I want to collect these all, even if I don't read them right away. Then we have The Princess Will Save You 
uh, the queen will betray you and the king, or the queen will betray you and the king will kill you. These are inspired by the Princess Bride. These are by Sarah Henning. I, um, I, high priority. I just don't know when. Kind of same thing. Uh, Rosamund Hodge. I have had these books for ages. Bright Smoke, Cold Fire. This is a Romeo and Juliet retelling book one and a duet, I think. And then Cruel Beauty and Crimson Bound. They're just kind of companions. Um, I've had these forever. They have moved around the shelf so much. I, I don't want to get rid of them. Like, I always intend to read them. I just have zero idea when. Oh, The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adie. I have been saying I'm going to read this for ages. I'm actually edging towards I might just end up unhauling it. I'm not going to lie. I've had it so long and it becomes less and less interesting to me. I do, however, have the original cover, which I love this cover. I think it's so pretty. I don't like the new one they did. Kingdom of Ash and Briars by Casey West. This was pitched as like a huge like retelling. Um, What is it? Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Emma and move on i know i might unhaul it <laughs> i don't know we have arcs for alex e harrow's spindle splintered and a mirror mended i have both of them in arcs and i started reading a spindle splintered and not love it so i'm probably just gonna gift these to a friend who is a big alex e harrow fan because i'm not that fan we have gilded by marissa meyer i have two copies this is the fairy loot edition this is so much nicer than the actual finished edition i have um, so I will probably be on hauling my regular edition. I haven't read this yet, but I am actually really excited because I loved her other fairy tale retellings. And then we have Prince of Song and Sea, which is a Little Mermaid story about Prince Eric. Um, so yeah, have high hopes for that one too. Tripod was just a tad too short. So these last two shelves up here will be freehand. So let's just get into it. Um, this is mostly just like fantasy crawl, like that didn't fit on the other shelf. So we have The Stardust Thief. This is the Fairy Loot Edition. Son of the Storm by Suyi Davies Okungabawa. Okung oh, I should have looked this up. I'm sorry. This is the Goldsboro Edition. I really hope they do a matching edition for the second book, which is coming out next, next year, I think. I really, this is a higher priority. City of Dust by Tara Sin. This is also the Fairy Loot Edition. I love the white. I think that's gorgeous. Um, Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho, Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson, Together We Burn, and two copies of Jade, Fire, and Gold. This is Owl Crate, I think, and this is Fairy Loot, I think. Um, I haven't read any of those. I haven't read anything on the shelf. Okay, it's not a shelf. We have the Jade, um, like it, Jade City series, I think it's called, by Fonda Lee. These are the Illumicrite editions, the Naked hard Hardbacks. If it's a Naked Hardback, I'm a sucker for it, okay? And we have two copies of Taste of Gold and Iron by Alexandra Rowland. This is super high on my TBR. This is the Broken Binding edition. And this is the Goldsboro edition. I will be reading them soon. Very soon. And on this shelf... I have read books on the shelf. Hey, good job, Sam. First, we have this sort of little, like, section that's sort of, like, historical fantasy inspired by literature fantasy. <laughs> I don't I don't even know if fantasy is, like, the correct term for it. But Court of Miracles by Kester Grant. This was fantastic. I read this this year. I absolutely loved it. It was sitting on my shelf in, like, the, like, danger of being unhauled area, and I absolutely loved it. It's sort of a retelling of, or a reimagining of... Les Mis. I'm not a big Les Mis fan, so I think it landed for me. I think if you're a big Les Mis fan, you're not going to like it, but I loved it. Um, Wild and Wicked Things by Francesca May. This is a great Gatsby retelling, I think. I think it's sapphic. This is the Fairy Loot edition of Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson, which has just gorgeous edges. I was not a huge fan of this book, but I did enjoy it enough that I'm not going to unhaul it. Then we have my Chloe Gong books. I have these Violent Delights, Our Violent Ends, both Fairy Loot editions, and the Barnes Noble edition of Fall Lady Fortune. I do have the Fairy Loot edition of Fall Lady Fortune on its way. I have no idea when it's going to arrive, though. Where, Dar Where Dreams Descend and When Night Breaks by Janelle An Angelis. I think. Angelus, like Los Angeles. Angelus, Janelle Angelus. I'm sorry. I should I should have looked up names. Um, these are Phantom of the Opera retellings, I think. So totally for that. The Darkening by Sun Sunya Mara. This is fairy loot, I think. This is actually a really pretty cover. I will show you. I love the foiling. I'm a sucker for really good foiling. Gorgeous. 
I haven't read that. The Drowned Woods. I have two different editions. This is, I want to say Illumicrate. I could be, this could be the Fairy Lou one. And then this is Owl Crate, which I do love. Is it Owl Crate? I love the Corgi. Okay, I love the Corgi. Okay, <laughs> some more Goldsboro's. We have Sister Song by Lucy Holland and The Leviathan by Rosie Andrews. And I, oh my gosh, love that. She's awake. Hidden Sea by Gregory Maguire. And it has this little like printing error that I kind of love. Bravely by Maggie Stavotter and The Scorpio Races by Maggie Stavotter. This is the Owl Crate 10th anniversary edition. I have read The Scorpio Races, but I'm going to reread it, I think. And then the Daphne Press edition of Lips Touch by Lainey Taylor. This is a collection of three short stories. This is the case. And this is what it looks like naked. I love that. And there's actually, you can't like 100% see all the details, but there is like foiling a little bit um yeah when I saw the like digital images of the cover I wasn't super taken but I do adore it now that I have seen it in person all right and quickly just share now you're on the tripod want to quickly share my Rosie Thorns collection I love these mugs I know Illumicrate was like oh, I'm sorry you're on the tripod and it's not even like great right now okay try that okay a Lumicrate was like toying with getting rid of doing this collection and people rebelled. I'm sorry for all the dust. This is a girl of paper, girls of paper and fire, which is just so pretty. I love this one. I don't even own this series, but I did buy the Lumicrate set that's coming out. We have obviously they had to do a throne of glass one. This is, I think, a scene from Air of Fire. I'm gonna stop pulling these off because the dust is just like sliding. Um this is a dark um dark artifices is that the series yeah um there's emma on there and then oh strange a dreamer one of my favorites um just mugs as well as series and then we have a poppy war one as well right here and then moving over i'll leave that we have a vicious one or actually it's from book two so that would be of ben vengeful, vengeful. Nice been so long um then we have a giddy in the ninth one love them this is a scene from book one obviously um and then we have here i think these came in a fairy loot they're little coasters with um like poisonous things on them so we have hellebore nightshade foxglove which i love foxglove in real life and belladonna so i think that's cool i would love to use those for like actual cups and then going over, like, this shelf isn't full. There's room for, like, one to two more mugs. This is another one of my favorite mugs. This is the uprooted one. Absolutely love this one. And then we have a Devabod one, a Akatar one, a, what's that, Jennifer L. Elmer Chart series, that one, and a Winter Night one. And this shelf looks even dustier, so we're going to move on. Okay, this is a much better, um angle i probably should have done this for the mugs as well but the one doesn't was not thinking also i'm sorry for the squeaky floor all right obviously we have a night circus um clock i think this came with the night circus box from Illumicrate, but i'm not sure it's pretty i just keep it because I, I think it's pretty and it was sitting on a very dusty willa harrendale fairy loot little plate i don't know trinket plate Okay, on this shelf, I've actually read quite a bit. Um, this shelf has my favorite book of all time on it, which is The Starless Sea. So this is the American paperback edition of The Starless Sea. I just am gaga for this book. Um, it's going to be in my um, winter reading vlog. So when that goes up, I will just be, you know, obsessing over it. I've read it three times now. And this is what the um, inside looks like. Just a fantastic book. And then we have, I'll just put it here for now. And then we have the um, Montague Sibling series, I think it's called. The first one is oh, Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. These are by Mackenzie Lee. I've only read The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue and actually the little novella, The Gentleman's Guide to Getting Lucky, which just kind of is like an extended epilogue. Um, but I read this like three or four times. I've annotated it a little bit. I, I love this book probably reread it again this year. I 
I would love to finish the series. <laughs> this is about his sister. This is about Monty. This is about his sister Felicity. And this is about their, um, their brother, half brother. I think his name is Henry. Not 100% certain. Then we have A Marvelous Light and Restless Truth by Freya Marski. These are the American hardcovers. Um, and then we have the Illumicrate hardcover of A Marvelous Light, which is one of my favorite editions they have ever done uh, because it's got this sort of clear wrapping. I love that. I think it is such a cool thing to do. Um, this edi My edition, sadly, has a, um, a scratch right here where something clearly cut it, but I didn't think it was, it wasn't on the cover, so I didn't think it was worth like contacting for a replacement, but it is gorgeous. I did really like this book. I'd like to give it, um, I'll reread it because I feel like I didn't love it as much as I could have because of like where I was mentally when I read it. And this is the Waterstones edition of A Restless Truth. I got it for the edges. Um, and I do have the Illumicrate edition ordered, but there was an issue with their copies so they had to remake them or uh the dust jacket thing you know and then we have the um more copies of the starless sea <laughs> this is the american hardcover this is um the regular or is this the waterstones edition hold on yeah so this is the um regular hardcover um uk edition and then this is the Waterstones exclusive edition, which I absolutely love. They both have the beaky sword on the edges. Absolutely love this. Then we have The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. I have not read that yet. I will be reading it soon. We have the Fairy Loot editions of... Oh, this is Fairy Loot as well. We have the Fairy Loot editions of these hollow vowels and these twisted bonds. I'm going to read those soon. I um, am worried I'm going to hate them. So... The Absolute Book by Elizabeth Knox. I really want to read this one soon. This is the Goldsboro edition, which um, I love this cover, first of all, just in general. And I, I love these edges. This is my first Goldsboro that I received. This is the one that actually convinced me to sign up. I had seen it announced. I was like, okay, I'll try to get on the waiting list. And I got on. Um, so I was really excited about that. And I'm to back of it. Um, I've seen this compared to American Gods, which I love American Gods. So I'm going to leave it out for a second because easier to pull things out so then we have um belladonna right by adeline grace this this is the um, um the barnes and noble hardcover edition which has these end pages and this and then the back looks like that i read this one recently i actually enjoyed it a lot more than i thought i was going to so that was a nice surprise um, especially because they have so many editions. So these were pre-order gifts. Yeah, so I have the little sign book plate and I have the piece of art right here, which I love. This is the fairy loot edition. Absolutely love it. The purples I think are just perfect. This is what the, um, underneath looks like and the end pages. I do think fairy loot has like the best end pages across the board. And then this is just the regular UK hardcover edition. I think it's just so pretty. And then we have This Vicious Grace. This is the fairy loot edition of that. Absolutely love it. So pretty. And um, this is the, um, the Barnes & Noble edition. Okay, this is actually going to be a slightly harder shelf to, like, film a little bit. Um, just because of where the tripod feet have to go. So we have a fire and are a river enchanted and a fire endless. These are the Illumicrate editions. They have alternate covers, I believe. I am really hoping to read these. I was gonna read them actually this month, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. Then I have When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. I wanna read this so bad. I love this cover. The concept sounds really good. Um high high on my list. So I hope I like that. I've never read anything by Kelly Barnhill. Uh, Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I'm going to read this before Day of Fall and Night comes out. I promise. The Illumicrate editions of Uprooted and Spinning Silver and the hardcovers. I love these books. Uprooted, I love more than Spinning Silver, which I think is an unpopular opinion, but I adored Uprooted, one of my favorite books. Uh, Spinning Silver, also very good. Highly recommend them both. Like I said, big Naomi Novik fan. And then I have um, quite a few copies of Catherine Arden's uh, Winter Night trilogy is that what it's called and Illumicrate is doing a set as well which I will definitely be purchasing these are the fairy loot covers um, and you know what let's just show you up close this is Bear and the Nightingale 
I've actually not read the third one, but I've read the first two in the series. I love all the details, especially like, I just, I'm a big fan. There's nothing else super fancy about these editions. There's stained edges, but um, these are just the end pages and the naked hardbacks have the animal on them. So they're not like the fanciest editions that have been put out ever. This is a fairy tale retelling about uh, Vasilisa um, and the Winter King, I think is the, the story. I don't know. The Girl in the Tower. This is my favorite cover. Look at those details. I love that. I loved this book when I read it. I just thought it was fantastic. Um, originally read The Bear and the Nightingale and was not super swept away by it, but then read Girl in the Tower and was like, I have to continue this series. And then never read Winter of the Witch, but you know. Um, so you have Winter of the Witch. I absolutely adore these editions. And then I just have the regular American hardcovers of the same three books. Um, and I actually read Bear in the Nightingale and Girl in the Tower as irks. So I feel like it's even more egregious that I never read Winter of the Witch, like in any form, but whatever. Then we have One Dark Window. This was a fairy loot edition. Um, you might recall I had an arc of it as well. Oh no, I think I've already unhauled that. Um, I was not super impressed. I really wanted to like it because Charlie Bowater was doing art for it and got me like super excited. So I like pushed it to the top of my TBR and was like, this book was just so mediocre but it's pretty so I don't think I'm gonna unhaul this edition. Then we have the luminaries. This is just the Barnes & Noble edition. I'll be reading this soon. Um, Far Wilder Magic by Allison Sapp. Love this cover. Really enjoyed this book when I read it earlier this year. Um, I think I gave it four and a half or five stars. It really is fantastic. It's sort of about a magic fox hunt but the ending is just so just just great. There's so much that happens at the end that's just like perfect. Um, and the aesthetic and atmosphere of this book is like to die for. I'm not even kidding. I love it. But um, not a lot of details have stuck with me. So I don't know if I could call it like a favorite anymore. But it um, it's a good book. I really do recommend it in general. Then we have Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. I really want to read this one like ASAP. Um, Enchantment of Ravens is empty right now because I'm reading it. This is my current read. We have Sorcery of Thorns, which I'll be reading really soon. Uh, Vespertine and the fairy loot edition of Vespertine. And then we have this key from uh, Enchantment, uh, or I'm sorry, Sorcery of Thorns. So I think that's cute. I have read a couple, a couple books on the shelf. Hopefully next year when I post a <laughs> bookshelf tour, I'll be like, I read all of these. <laughs> but anyway, so we have In the Ravenous Dark by uh, A.M. Strickland. I really want to read this one. I think it's a poly queer relationship. I don't know much more about it, actually. Uh, two editions of Violet Made of Thorns. This is the Owl Crate. I don't often say Owl Crates are my favorite editions, but I love this cover. It's absolutely to die for. Then I have my original hardcovers of the Winner's Curse trilogy. I haven't read these yet, but I have the Illuminate editions too, which are just really, 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 really pretty. Then I have the Midnight Lie by Marie Rutoski. These are all by Marie Rutoski. Um, I absolutely love this book. One of my favorite books when I read it. I have not read book two yet. Which is a hollow heart. The Traitor's Kiss by Erin Beatty. I I might unhaul this one. I haven't read it, but I might unhaul it. I just have a feeling. I aged out of it in the time it's been sitting on my shelf. That's the feeling I have. Anyway, uh, then we have the, these are the Barnes & Noble editions of Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Ballad of Never After. I read Once Upon a Broken Heart. I fucking hated it so much, but some cost fallacy and all that. And I do love how the um I do love how they look and I love even more that that is cool and they did something similar for Ballad of Never After which I show ya oh my receipt and I'm sure they'll do it for book free and then the fairy loot editions of Once Upon a Broken Heart and Ballad of Never After. Again, uh, Sunk Cost Fallacy. These are also just some of the prettiest book fairy loot has ever put out. But this is their fake title under the jacket. I love that they do that um, for this series because I think it's just such a fun, like, touch, I guess. And here's that one. I don't know if you can read it. It says an inglorious history of the house of Slaughterhood or S Slaughterwood. Slaughterwood. I haven't read Ballad of Never After um, yet. I will 
even though I hated book one, for whatever reason, this series has me, like, believing I should be caught up on it. Then we have one of my favorite series of all time, which is Strange the Dreamer. You're going to see, oh, sorry. You're going to see so many editions of this. Actually, this is the majority of editions, I think. Um, first, we have this key from the Great Library of Zosma. There we go. In focus. Um, here we go. Miracles for breakfast and a little wax seal, which is really just fun. And we have these are my UK covers. I had to get these used. So one of them, I think, is the one of them's Illumicrate, I think. Let's see. Here. Um, I think this is just a regular hardcover. Um, absolutely adore these. And I got them actually fairly reasonably priced, which was really happy. I think this was an Illumicrate. It's got the stained edges, but maybe they just did that. But I guess not. It's numbered though. It's number three ninety nine. So really pleased to have those guys. And then um, this just came out. This is the fifth anniversary edition. Um, absolutely love it. Oh, this book is phenomenal. If you've never read Strange to Dreamer, you're totally one hundred percent missing out. And then we have my American hardcovers, which this is my original copy, and it might have been. A first edition it is so that's first edition i guess technically that is too okay on this shelf i have actually read quite a few of them mostly because there's a lot of doubles on this shelf so <laughs> we have the mirror visitor quartet by christelle dabos i'm going to be reading this next year for sure i actually have a plan for when and there's sort of a particular thing I'm doing there's gonna be a video not necessarily dedicated to this series but the series will be part of that video and then we have Daughter of the Moon Goddess this is the fairy loot edition gorgeous 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 um I read Daughter of the Moon Goddess I read it uh, last month two months ago I enjoyed it actually a lot it wasn't the like most like the hardiest meal I've ever had but I did really like it and we have Heart of the Sun Warrior I will probably read that soon maybe the before the end of the year, definitely early next year. I would like to finish that. Girl Who Fell Beneath by the Sea by Axie O. I read this as well. I loved it. We have the UK hardcover Fairy Loot and the American hardcover. Then we have the gorgeous Fairy Loot editions of Elizabeth Lim's books. I have read Six Crimson Cranes. Um, I have not read Dragon's Promise. It probably will over the summer because I read Six Crimson Cranes when I was on vacation. And so I will always have it sort of like with that in my mind. Um, and then The Mermaid and the Witch. The Mermaid, the Witch, and the Sea by Takuda Hall, which I think is sapphic. Trinkets. Um, it's just the dragon on this shelf. So we have this dragon. I, this is my first dragon statue I ever had. I actually have quite a few. You'll probably see more as we continue. I love this. I think I got it at Medieval Times. And then we have The Depths by Nicole Lesperance. This is the Owl Crate edition. I don't love this cover, and I wasn't actually interested in this book. But um, the first line actually really got me, and I do like, not that, I think that's kind of hideous. Um, <laughs> I think this is Rude Beetle did this art. I really like that. If it had the title on the spine, I would flip it around and use that instead of the front that they actually went with. But the first line of this book actually got me kind of convinced to keep it on my shelf for a little longer. Um, which is there's a video of me dying on the internet and I can't stop watching it. That is such a gripping first line. So like massive respect, Nicole Lesperance. Like way to grab me. Then we have another Owl Crate edition, which is The Poison Season by Mar Mara Rutherford. So I'm actually going to make a video about why I canceled my Owl Crate subscription, but I canceled it and then realized this was the December book for this year. And I was like, well, shit, I really want a The Poison season I want that book and the um I knew who was doing the art for the cover and for the undercover and I was like well I have to just resubscribe for one month so this I think is gorgeous I love this I think it's just so pretty and they kept the Charlie Bowater art on the naked hardcover so absolutely gaga for that I think it's just the prettiest thing and then we have a lesson in vengeance by victoria lee i love this book i read it earlier this year this is fantastic if you're looking for a dark academia text this it does not get more aesthetically perfect than this book the devil makes free by tori 
Bovalino. Uh, this is the Illumicrite edition. I actually want to read, uh, this author has another book out called Not Good for Maidens, which is sort of a goblin market, goblin king retelling, which I really want to read. All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Steve Otter. Um, this one and Bravely are the only, oh, I guess that's not true anymore, but I haven't read this one. I haven't read Bravely and I haven't read Grey Warren, which I'll be reading soon, but I've read pretty much everything else Maggie Steve Otter that I have on my shelf. And I've actually read pretty much all of her YA the Dreamer trilogy by Maggie Steve Otter. I love these two. Um, I will be reading Grey Warren. I, I was going to get to it this year. I feel like I'm saving it at this point. Then we have The Hazelwood and the Night Country by Melissa Albert. I loved The Hazelwood. It was one of my favorite books. I actually read it as an arc. I disliked strongly The Night Country. I thought it was unnecessary and weakened book one immensely, to be honest. So, you know, I keep it because I don't know why. All Our Hidden Gifts by a Catherine or Caitlin? Carolyn O'Donohue. I really want to read this one. This feels like a Halloween type book though. Same with Labyrinth Lost by Zoraida Cordova. I haven't read anything by Zoraida Cordova. I think I have another one of her books, maybe not. Um, but this is the one I would start with because I love witch stories. Uh, Devil and the Deep, Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea by April Genevieve Tutolki. This is April Genevieve Tutolki's debut. I read it back when it came out. I absolutely love this book. It is phenomenal. It is just so so good um or at least that's how I remember it being I'm kind of terrified to reread it and find out that I hated it um I'm kind of just concerned House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland uh Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell and Piranesi Two Happiness Piranesi by Susanna Clark I love both Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell and Piranesi to death those are some of my favorite books of all time both of them just and for completely different reasons they're just fantastic A Strange and Stubborn Endurance by Foz Meadows. I read this earlier this year. I really enjoyed it while I was reading it. This is another one that a lot of the details just did not stick with me, so though it was a really enjoyable book, I don't think I could ever call it a favorite just because it just doesn't have that lasting aftertaste, but I feel like a good book really needs that for me to love it. And then we have After Love by Tanya Byrne um, and Sixteen Souls by Rosie Talbot. And Cemetery Boys, which I love. Cemetery Boys is so good. Sunbearer Trials, both uh, Cemetery Boys and Sunbearer Trials are by Aiden Thomas. I will be reading Sunbearer Trials early next year, if not by the end of this year. And then Thorn by Thorn by Intisar Kan Kanini. Kanani. Oh god, I should have looked up all of these pronunciations. This is the Fairy Loot Edition. I love this cover. I like the original cover too, but I love this cover. So we have three copies of Twin Crowns by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber, which is funny that they are both named Catherine, one with a C and one with a K. I have the red edition, the rose edition, and then this is the fairy loot edition, which mixes them both up on the edges. It's pretty. I will read this eventually. Shadow in the Glass by J.J.A. Harwood. This is a Goldsboro edition. I think this is a retelling of Cinderella. Threadneedle by Carrie Thomas and The Head Witch by Carrie Thomas. Both of those are Goldsboro editions. And I have like a little like novella section, which kind of just happened naturally. But we have What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. I will be reading that soon. Every Heart a Doorway by Shauna McGuire. Spear by Nicola Griffith. And All the Horses of Iceland by Sarah Tolmy. I think Spear is getting a sequel. I haven't read any of those. I haven't. I've read almost no books on the shelf. Wow. Um, For the Wolf and For the Throne by Hannah Witten. I'm actually going to be reading For the Wolf as part of my winter reading vlog, so like I said when that posts, you'll be able to see my thoughts. The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed and Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. That's the Illumicre edition and the Fairy Loot edition, and they don't match. They're in the same world, but they're standalones. House of Salt and Sorrow by Erin A. Craig, and I'm so excited there's going to be a sequel coming out. I am so freaking excited. I loved House of Salt and Sorrows. It was amazing, one of my favorite books. Oh, and I actually read it um, when I first had my eye injury, so it was like those books I was reading at that time, as well as Small Favors. I read them back to back because I loved House of Salt and Sorrows. I was like, I have to continue with her writing. Small Favors freaks me out so freaking much. It's so good, but scary. Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Ross. Uh, the Shadow Song by S.J. Jones. And you're thinking, Sam, where's Winter Song? I love Winter Song. It's one of my favorite books. I've not been able to get through Shadow Song. I'm not loving it nearly as much. Um, but Winter Song is on my favorite bookshelf, which we will get to. Descendant of the Crane by Joan Hay. I'll be reading that soon. I, yes, soon. And then Strike the Zither, also by Joan Hay. I just finished that one a couple weeks ago. I, when I was reading it, I was like, 
you know, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I finished it. I was like, well, shit, I need more. I love it. It is sitting so well. It's like the reverse of some of these other books where while I was reading it, I was just like, it's okay. Having finished it, I was like, that was fantastic. And it sits so well with me. And it just is having this great like ripple effect after taste. And I do have the, um, the peacock bookmark. Can you see? Pretty. And I have the, um, the pre-order art as well. So then the chosen and the uh, beautiful by Nivo. Oh, I'm probably saying that wrong. Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sushimura. That one I will be reading soon as well. Um, kind of actually part of that same video that I talked about for the Mirror Visitor Quartet. And then Magic Steeped in Poison and A Venom Dark and Sweet, both by Judy Lynn. I was close. They're both the uh, Barnes Noble editions. So we're pretty low to the floor for these. So I'm going to just pull them out and show you as best I can. So like I said, some of these are just extra copies that I didn't want on the main shelf because I just didn't have the room, but I still wanted to keep them somewhere I could grab them or they're books that are kind of on the chopping block and I will tell you what is what. So all the way here in the corner, we have my arc of the girl on the tower. This is just an extra copy. It needed room. Only a monster by Vanessa Lynn. This is, I don't know which edition, fairy loot, I guess. Um, it's not on the chopping block, but it's like getting there kind of title. The Ivory Key by Ak Akshaya Rahman. You, um, I think I showed you that my other copy we already went through. I just don't love this edition. This is the Owl Crate. I will probably just unhaul this unless I love the book after I read it. The Owl Crate edition of the Luminaries was one of the most disappointing editions they did this year. They were like hyping it up and it's just blue everything they do is just blue i do like that they got stained edges i think that's a gorgeous color but again unless i love this book i'll probably unhaul this edition because i don't need it then we have um my uk hardcover of once upon a broken heart it has a fox under the cover i My Ark of Dowry of Blood. I might just end up giving this to a friend who I think will appreciate it. Again, I liked the book. Not enough to, I think, have multiple copies, though. This isn't an unhaul video, but I'm, like, talking about them as if they are. Then we have my um, hardcover U.S. editions of Nevernight and... Ooh, wow, you're really close. I'm sorry. And God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. These are just extra copies that needed a space to live. This is... Again, a really super disappointing edition of an Owlcray book. This is The Whispering Dark. And I do have another edition of that as well. So I just didn't need it. Then we have, we actually have a couple editions of The Night Circus. So here's my original hardcover that I read. And we have the hardcover they put out at the same time The Starless Sea came out. And the Illumin Crate hardcover. I think it is a beautiful looking book. I am not the hugest fan of this book. I love The Starless Sea, but I did not love The Night Circus. So I just kind of collect them and keep them out of respect for <laughs> and adoration of Aaron Morgenstern. But I don't need them on display. And then here we have The Immortality Thief by Aaron, or Taryn Hunt. This was a Goldsboro edition. It's pretty. It's not really the type of book I'm interested in reading, though. We have The Star-Touched Queen and... Crown of Wishes by Rosh Shani Chukchi. I read Star Touched Queen a long time ago and was just like very okay about it, but I would like to give them another try. These are just down here because I don't have room to display them. I think they're actually very lovely, beautiful books and they're not on the chopping block at all. Then we have two books that, oh my god, they are, they are on the chopping block. My fairy loot editions of Kingdom of the Wicked and Kingdom of the Cursed, are they pretty? Yes. Was book one horrible? Yes. Yes, it was. I would love, because I do have the third one on its way, I would like to read book two, and after that I'll decide whether I'm keeping them. Um, but if I get rid of them, I would like to give them to someone who is a fan. So, we have Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. Um, I have a feeling I'm never going to read this now. I have a feeling. <sighs> Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. Is this book beautiful? Yes. Um, I think that's going to keep it from being unhauled, but I was so disappointed by this book. I actually hated it because I was so disappointed. We're going to talk about some more Owlcrate editions that disappointed me, and an edition that didn't disappoint me, actually. So, 
Lake's Edge by Lyndall Clipstone. I, this was my first Owl Crate edition I got. It came and it, I had just finished reading Winter Song as well. And it said, if you love Winter Song, you'd love this. So I was like, oh my gosh, beautiful. Plus the naked, uh, the naked hardcover. And it's just a gorgeous edition. Cool. And then their printer fucked up. I don't blame Owl Crate for this. I don't, I, I'm just disappointed by it. I, this is just, it's, it's out of their control. But their edition of Forest Fall is shiny. I, when I tell you I hate shiny books like this on the naked hardcover you don't understand this is my least favorite design choice um they're so they're sending dust jackets and i'm glad they're not making like a waste and reprinting them because that would be pretty bad um but it, it breaks my heart and so these books will never have a place on my shelves unless i absolutely adore them and um i have a feeling i won't love them enough to move them up because of that fuck up um so it's not their fault. It's the printer's fault. But it, it pissed me off. I'm sorry. You can tell I'm angry. Then we have this uh, special. They just put out special editions of the Isha books because of whatever reason, right? This is uh, the Savage Song, which has I love these. I haven't read this one yet. It's just down here because it is such a low priority read. I actually I should say about Forest Fall. I think Owl Crate's response was the best it could be. I really don't blame them for it. I just am super disappointed. And like I said, it will never have a high place on my shelf and I could even see myself unhauling it. Is that petty? Yes, but there are a million books out there I want to read. A million books I own that I haven't read and I cannot, I mean, I can, I could keep it forever, but um, I don't have to, you know. Spinning Silver and Uprooted. These are just my original copies. Didn't have room <laughs> on the shelf. Then we have, so this is Ever After, this is the Fake Crate cover, which I love that they did an alternate cover with the same artist um, in Deeper Waters, also by F.T. Lukens, and the regular, so this is Ever After cover. I read So This Is Ever After really recently, and I had, like, I was excited for it. I didn't have, like, big expectations, but I was excited for it, and it was not good. So that's probably an unhaul. I'm just probably going to take In Deeper Waters with it. My Arc of a Marvelous Light. Uh, this is just down here because I've never room. <laughs> this is uh, Gideon the Ninth. You're like, Sam, what is Gideon doing down there? This, uh, again, I just didn't have the room. And also, I bought this one 100%. Can you see? It's not going to focus, is it? Yes, it is. It's the ninth printing. So, yeah. Then I have my anniversary edition of Leviathan Wakes. Again, just in every room. And uh, spare copies of this hollow vow, or yeah, these hollow vows. And these twisted bonds i haven't read these yet um if i do read them unless i love them i'm probably gonna unhaul the american covers i don't really have a reason to keep those canine viewers recognize one of the books on here Alrighty. Oh, well done if that's you we have another edition of only a monster by vanessa len i will probably read this one soon this one i think has the potential to be like a just like hidden gem the shadow between us i might unhaul this one i think it's on the chopping block i think that's safe to say girl serpent thorn i think this is also on the chopping block but it's a lot lower down uh, because it's sapphic so then we have this trilogy that i have collected this trilogy i know nothing about it i think i was just like feeling like i needed to be completionist so i bought them all and i will read them i think i'll probably binge them when i read them but that is <laughs> Dangerous Remedy, Monstrous Design, and Glorious Poison, all by Cat Dunn. They're not on the chopping block. I just haven't read them, and I'm. it's not a high priority to read these guys. Here's another one I think could be a hidden gem. Master of One by Jada Jones and Danny Bennett. I, um, it was on the chopping block for a while, but I saw some reviews recently because I was, like, just curious, and I was like, ah, I think this has potential to be a book I love. So it's not really on the chopping block anymore. Year of the Reaper by Makia lucier um i think this is on the shopping block it's pretty though i love how dark the edges are blood scion by deborah fallet oh you're really high up blood scion by deborah fallet this is not on shopping block it's just again not super high on my tbr i actually really like that edition i'm glad it came in a book box then we have a whole new world one of the disney twisted tales i bought this because i was like it's so pretty uh, and then i realized i have no interest in reading it so i don't i don't know what i'm gonna do with that one we have another set of The Monsters of Verity by B.E. Schwab. I'll read it eventually. Then we have... Oh my god. Okay, so... Uh, we have Caravel. Original UK hardcover, first edition. I actually got this in a fairly late, I think. 
I love Caravel. I love Caravel. Legendary UK hardcover. I love Legendary. I love Legendary. Finale UK hardcover. I hate Finale. I hate Finale. It, 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 it ruined books one and two for me. I fucking hate Finale. Um, then we have the just collector's edition of Caravel. They're down here because I am ashamed of them. I have the arc of Caravel because I read it early. I loved Caravel. And I have, I think this is the, I have no idea, actually, anymore. Taiwanese, maybe, edition of Caravel. It's very pretty. And then I have, because I think this is a fun joke, this is the Tesco edition of Caravel. <laughs> it's yellow. <laughs> I feel like no one else owns this edition. <laughs> Last three on this shelf, we have Coldest Touch by Isabel Sterling. I am actually really interested in reading this one. I just hate this cover. Arrow to the Moon by Emily XR Pan. Again, I really want to read this one. I'm just not a huge fan of this cover. And then my Waterstone, I think it's a Waterstones exclusive edition of The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. Because I had um, the Night Country and then a matching edition, but I was like, I only need one spare copy, right? And I did not like the Night Country. So I kept the Hazelwood. I loved this book. Um, I bought this at the Waterstones in Canterbury. Down here we have some more dragons. I think I got these guys in South Dakota. Maybe. I feel like I did. Okay, bottom, 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 bottom. We have Poster Girl by Veronica Roth. This is the Fairy Loot edition. I had no interest in it, but maybe I'll read it. I don't think I'm ready to unhaul it yet. I think I would like to give it a chance. The Owl Crate edition of Book of Night by Holly Black. I have a million editions of this. My Ark of Babel. I just did not have room for it, but I, I love this, especially because it has the full title and none of the others have the full title on them. Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Morellier. This is another one that I think has potential to be just like a um, hidden gem. Not necessarily hidden. A lot of people love that book, but you know. And I have the um, Shadow and Betrayal and the Price of War. This is the um, the Long Price Quartet. That's what it's called by Daniel Abraham. I really want to read these. I've had them for ages. The Beautiful Ones by Sil Silvia Moreno Garcia. Highly want to read that one. Uh, Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. Again, really want to read this one. Some of these just get down here because I have them for ages and just don't get to them. Then I have my copy of Lies of Loch Lamora, which I've never finished. <laughs> Red Seas Under Red Skies. And then I have another copy of Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear. Then I have The Shadow of What Was Lost, which I loved this book, but I don't remember anything about it. And uh, an echo of things to come. I would like to reread book one and then read book two and pick up book three. Oh my gosh, one of my favorite series of all time. I don't know if it holds up. I haven't read it in years and years and years and years and years. I hope it holds up because I want to love it, but um, if I ever reread it. But anyway, that is the Raiura Revelations. This is book one's bind up of the first two books. This is Theft of Swords, Rise of Empire, and Heir of Novron. Oh my god, this series like turned me on. When did this rip? Hmm, I don't know. This is the series that got me back into epic fantasy. And then last but not least, we have the Inheritance Trilogy. Oh, you're so heavy. By N.K. Jemisin. Um, this is her original trilogy. I've read the first two books and I really liked them. So I will, I will continue. I will read book three at some point, but they're not so closely related that I felt like I had to pick up book three immediately. And then we're going to turn real quick to these piles. I'm not going to pull anything out, really. This pile is mysteries. I don't have a lot of mysteries. Inheritance games, I want to read that soon. Yeah, I haven't read anything on this pile. It's fine. We're fine. And we have graphic novels and a Danmei because I did not know where else to put that. I want to read this one soon just to see if I like the genre and like the style of writing and translation and everything. Um, I don't think Don May is the genre. I don't know, though. I know very little about that. Hookie Volume 1, I loved. Hookie Volume 2, I hated. Tide Song was okay. I actually really loved these. I've never read the actual fangirl book, but I liked the manga a lot. This I got for nostalgia. I love The Prince of and the Dressmaker. That one's so cute. I love Nimona. Heartstopper was really cute, and Oxy was actually really good. So really, the only thing on here I haven't read is The Husky and His White Cat Shizune. Okay, so now we're getting into the really hard to film stuff. So we have um, <clears throat> basically 
this little corridor. <laughs> I will clean it out a little bit so I can like get a, um, a chair in there and everything. But um, now we do this shelf. This has sort of some fantasy and some other like urban fantasy, um, and some sci-fi uh, and just things that <laughs> like they don't fit anywhere else. Now we're gonna start up there. I think the top two shelves will be handheld and then I will try to get a tripod in, but I have a feeling that is not going to work. So the chair like just barely fits. Okay, so um, up here uh, we have this is a, a light box from Lit Joy. It is of Starfall. It's very cute. I have these two Moomin Valley little jars and then I have my tour editions of Crescent City 1 and 2. Um, yes, I really fun, true um, fact. I was only able to get this one because of the 2020 pandemic and everything closing. That's something. Okay, and then back here we have uh, Sarah J. Mass. That's pretty much all that's on the shelf. Um, here I have my original hardcovers of these three. A uh, tour edition of Court of Silver Flames. My original hardcovers of Throne of Glass. This one is signed and personalized as a first edition. I um, love it. And then we have um, some hardcovers. I think they are my original hardcovers of A Court of Thorns and Roses. And I don't think there's anything. Oh, there's another Silver Flames, which you know I hate. Going onto the shelf, this has the most like trinkets on it, but that's because I feel like Carrie Dresden would not care. <laughs> uh, so first we have this thing. I actually got this at work. Isn't that cute? And then I have these two Canes puppies. This is the 25th anniversary one. Um, Canes and Canes is a chicken, fried chicken, fast food joint. It is fantastic. Probably my favorite like fast food right now. Um, my dad got me this because it came out actually the same year. I was 45, so last year. And then um, this one my friend got me. <clears throat> uh, I've been sick with COVID, which is... <laughs> I've actually been filming this video over the course of many days. And it was my first time back to filming it, <laughs> which is why my voice sounds weird. But she sent me this uh, when I was stuck home with COVID. And um, it's it's Clark Griswold. And there's this squirrel. It's cute. I love it. I feel like if Harry Dresden ate canes, he'd love it. And then I have some ponies for a while. These were actually by my Jay Kristoff books. And if you know, you know. I'm not going to move them all. I'm sorry. Um, those are some of them. I actually have more of them on my window. So there, um, and those are the favorites. So yeah, I do pick favorites. There we go. Okay. So these are all my Dresden Files books. Say what you will about this series. I'm obsessed. I think they're fantastic. I love them. I have read, so I have read them all. Let's let's say that. But I originally had read up until I think Proven Guilty or White Knight when I was in high school or early college, something like that. Maybe I was a freshman. And then something happened and I just stopped reading them. I just didn't have the time or the space. And I mean it's a long series, so that's fair. And then two years ago or last year, these guys came out. I wanna say it was two years ago, I think it was twenty twenty. And those are basically just one book published in two volumes. And I was like, you know what, in anticipation of Battleground, I'm going to read them all. And I did, and I became just, like, even more thoroughly obsessed. They are fantastic. They are some of my favorite books of all time. Are they perfect? No, but <clears throat> they are just fantastic. And Changes uh, is probably one of the best books I've ever read. Um, and actually, at Changes, and then not Ghost Warriors fun, but um, <clears throat> these are all just, like, fantastic books. And I do actually have... This is hard doing one-handed, but this is the Grim Oak Press edition of Stormfront, which, oh, this is so hard one-handed. Okay, hold on. This is the cover. He's not wearing a hat. Isn't that fun? Um, and he's holding Bob, and it's a wraparound cover, and Mr. is on the back. Yeah, love it. Um, and it is signed and numbered, and it's signed by Chris McGrath, who does the cover art. And it's more art for this book. And it's also signed by uh, Jim Butcher himself. So, yeah, it's very cool, very precious. One of my favorite editions I own. I showed you Tail Chaser's song. It is the same company who did that one. Okay, I gotta put the camera down again real quick. And then we're just gonna do this one handheld, too, because... Um, then I'll try to get the tripod. We have some, uh, I don't know if the last one is New Adult, but these are all New Adult. We have Guild by Raven Kennedy, King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair. Um, this is from the light box. Song of the Forever Rains by E.J. Mello, and the last one by K.D. Edwards. Kate, I've heard this is, I've heard such mixed things about that one. It's the first in a urban fantasy 
sci-fi series um and it's queer which i is why i've been drawn to it and it's also like based on the tarot which i think is cool but of this pile of only red guild it was fun it was fine and then here we have um the fairy loot tarot cards from the most recent edition and we have more illumicrate teacups these are their goddesses i really wish they hadn't put hades on this i wish it was just persephone but we have persephone and hades athena nyx and i believe that is nemesis okay i tried for a tripod it's not working so please bear with me i don't think i'll be able to get the tripod for the rest of these shelves just because of how narrow it is here and how wide the base of the tripod is i do aspire someday to have bookcases that are not like wedged into a little corner like this but <clears throat> here we go so um this is the um daughter of smoke and bone series i have the original three i read and then I have the Illumicrate hardcovers. I love these. These covers are the new UK covers. I think they're gorgeous. And I love that Illumicrate made them hardcover. I think these are stunning. I think these are the covers the books deserved. As much as these are like iconic covers. Like book one, I feel like you saw this in the bookshops all the time. Um, but I feel like these actually fit the books more. I have read these. I am planning to reread them. Because I really did love them when I read them especially book two i remember being just like absolutely blown away by days of blood and starlight then we have three copies of book of night i've not read this book i have heard such mixed things this is the um the barnes and noble edition yeah and then we have this is the fairy loot i believe and the illumicrate so i will hopefully read them and i put them next to ninth house by lee bardugo i wasn't a huge huge fan of it when i read it but i think i will reread it i am actually really excited for hellbent because the ending of this had me super excited and then i have a paper craft from an illumicrate and i have the magician trilogy by lev grossman this is one of my longest standing books on the shelf i have read uh, the magician several times because i keep rereading it in anticipation of reading these two i am hoping this year is the year i finally read these two i have such a complicated relationship with the magicians but i have definitely come out on the side of i love it it's one of my favorite books and then we have the um i actually don't know what this series is called but this is by amanda foodie i have wanted to read these for ages i remember when ace of shades came out i was like that sounds so good i bought it immediately and then only bought these two so that i would get hardcover so i'd have matching ones on the shelf but i still haven't read them i did read all of us villains and all of our demise which amanda foodie co-wrote i read that last year because wow it's 2023 and um i loved them so i'm really excited to read these Okay, going down. This is going to be a harder shelf to film. We have my Babel collection, excluding my ARC, which you guys already saw. So this is my regular hardcover. Um, this is the Illumicrate one. This is the two editions of the Fairy Loot. This one you can't see because I have it pressed so tight, but it is actually quite damaged. Um, <clears throat> and again, especially towards the end, it also the cover was like like the, the case, not the not the dust jacket the like boards of the cover were like folded and bent so i asked for a replacement or if i could you know send this one back and they just sent me a new one which is really sweet i will say customer service for fairy loot and illumicrate is just really stellar but now i have these two and when you press it really tight you can't tell that the whole book was like folded on itself it was very strange <clears throat> and then i have the uk hardcover i don't think this is a special edition one I don't think I get it like a Waterstones. I think I just did the hardcover. Yeah, that's just a regular hardcover. Then I have my Bone Season series by Samantha Shannon. I have read these two. I loved them both for very different reasons, but it's been so long I want to reread them. I do have the Song Rising in the matching first edition hardcover, and it's too tight for me to pull out. I'm sorry. One-handed, it's too hard. And then I have two editions of The Mask Falling. This is the standard. This is the indie edition. And then I also have... Uh, come on, come on, come on on the merits of unnatural in this uh pamphlet that is very cool one of my other prized possessions that i have this one was a pre-order gift um for the mime order which is probably the coolest pre-order gift i've ever gotten then i have the hardcovers of the diviner series uh, actually i don't know if that's what it's called by libba bray i really want to read these um maybe this year maybe next year it'll definitely happen super excited these are the fairy loot editions with like matching to the original cover which is the cover that is gorgeous and this poor series went through so many cover changes but i'm glad that i have a matching set that was really important to me getting down these are gonna be more complicated um shelves to film so we have first we'll start here with little trinkets i have these tb oh tbr cards they're uh illumicrate tbr cards i've never actually used them but they are cute um that might be a fun challenge video and then i have well first we'll do this this is yuletide tales a lenormand deck it's kind of like a tarot deck um 
it's for the holiday specifically because people used to tell ghost stories and then i have the ethereal visions illuminated tarot deck by matt hughes i really love this tarot deck it's great for reading and i have this um it's cardin i hate the quill prints books i keep it here to like keep this book flat i'm not gonna lie um and then here we have uh, here the wind sings by haruki mirakami this is an edition i bought an accident and then immediately after i bought it i was like oh shit i wanted the other edition so i immediately bought the other edition i ordered it online um but it came and it's so cute so i'm keeping it um it, it's it's adorable I, I kind of love it um and i'll be reading that one actually soon um then we have a key this is from lit joy i think it is a um hobbit themed key it is really oh, come here come here come here let me show you the front it's a door it's cute i love it and then we have one of illumicrate's book tins which i still love this is um great libraries um <laughs> these are cute i don't think there's anything in there yeah no okay uh, readjusting a little bit to show you this shelf this is like a literature heavy shelf um with also like a little gothic section and also kind of like hot girl reading thing you know that whole like trend so we have the satanic verses by salman rushdie a winter's tale by mark helpern once upon a river and house of spirits by isabella allende allende <clears throat> then we have my murakami i i have south of the border west of the sun i want to read this one soon as well this is the actual edition of here the wincing i wanted it's here the wincing and P the pinball book which title is escaping me um and then norwegian wood which i've read and i i really did enjoy it i have mixed thoughts but i enjoyed it and colorless sakuru tazaki and his years of pilgrimage which i also really enjoyed actually there's a reading vlog up if you want to check that out of um, both of these because i wrote them back to back and i'm gonna do something similar for these guys actually and then we have is it 1Q84, QT84? I don't know. Um, by Haruki Murakami as well. Um, some, these are just some postcards. Here's a fish bear. They're cute. We're not going to look at them all. And then we have another copy of Color of the Sakura Tazaki. This is the edition I read. Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Safan. I read this. I enjoyed it, but I was not as gaga over it as I think a lot of people are, which was kind of a disappointment. My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Atessa Moshveg. I actually have two editions of this. I, I keep saying I want to read it, but then every time I like pick it up, I'm like, eh today <clears throat> orm shadow by prita sharma o caledonia by elspeth barker this one i'm really excited for but probably it'll be this autumn just kids by patty smith i think this summer and my brilliant friend by elena ferrente this will probably be a springtime read so this shelf is double stacked so i'm just going to show you everything and then i will pull things out and show you the next row so we have the monstromologist series by rick yancey and the mass market editions because i think they're cooler and fit the vibe of the series more the Parasol Protectorate by Gail Character. I've had this series since I was probably um, a freshman or sophomore in high school and I still haven't read them. But I refuse to get rid of them. They're like going to sit here until I read them. I have the um, Old Man's War series by John Scalzi. I got this like two years ago in its completion because I really wanted these editions. And I did not want to risk getting different editions. Um, I still have not read these. I actually kind of forgot I had them, but I am in a big sci-fi mood, so maybe soon. And then we have my other edition of Tail Chaser's Song. <clears throat> Let me wiggle over here. My other edition of Tail Chaser's Song. This will be the edition I read. And I have another dragon. Here at the end we have the Enchanted, which is actually um, literature fiction. And then we have the Golem and the Genie. And yeah. I will pull everything out and show you what's behind it. This is the only shelf outside of my classics shelves that have classics, and it's just because they fit. So we have uh, Hamlet, The Age of Innocence. Um, this is The Reckoning. It's actually uh, got a couple short stories in it. I think it has two. This was actually really good. I enjoyed that. I have um, this edition of The Little Prince, or Le Patron Prince, um, that I got at... Um, was it Daunt Books? I got it in the UK. Um very cool i love this edition uh that we have the great gatsby some christmas time stories Coraline, the like mini throne of glass and assassin's blade i bought those and realized i did not actually want the set my like faux leather bound song of ice and fire ocean at the end of the lane <clears throat> i think i have another edition i could be wrong magician's guild by trudy canavan um address unknown by Catherine christman taylor prince of thorns gardens of the moon these fake books um slouching towards Bethlehem and the hours and then I have these two little like shadow hunter books that I kind of forgot were there and forgot I had this one came like damaged but I didn't care enough they're like short stories from some of the short story collections we have the fascinators 
um, which I have wanted to read for ages, Dark Rise, which is super high on my list, as well as The Dark and Hollow Star. These poor three have just been kind of, like, shoved in this little corner. Not forgotten about, but I do feel like they're kind of lonely over here. These are the Illumicrate editions of From Blood and Ash. I like the edges. And then we have the Bookish Box. <laughs> This is the bookish box edition. I love these covers. Um, they are all here. So we have From Blood and Ash, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, Crown of Gilded Bones, and The War of Two Queens. Um, I have only read the first one in the series, and I don't know. <laughs> I have way too many copies for how I felt about that book. Then I have The First Four Crave Books by Tracy Wolf, also by Bookish Box. I um, have lots of thoughts on Bookish Box. They are certainly not my favorite. I think I'm just going to stick with them until I finish up collecting these if they put out more. Otherwise, I'm probably not going to purchase more. I, it, these are the only two like active series I have from them. And I just am a completionist. But otherwise, I don't, I don't buy from them anymore. Um, and I doubt there's really anything they could do or any addition they could put out that would uh, convince me to purchase from them again. But I do need to complete these. I know. I'm not the most moral when it comes to books. So this is a just glass bottle. I don't think it's anything like it's bookish aesthetic, but I don't think it's like anything crazy. Um, and we have this. This is uh, from Owl Crate. This was from my first Owl Crate and like convinced me to stick with them. Um, it is a quill pen. It's amazing. It's gorgeous. And then this, I think it might also be from owl crate it could be fairly late i'm not sure um yeah just a black steel. i had nowhere else to keep that i have this edition of fellowship of the ring because i think the cover is cool and then i have aragon this is a signed copy i i love aragon it was one of my childhood fantasy series and it it definitely molded me a lot and i love how dragons work in this book and then i have um this edition of northern lights um or golden compass which i love that book as well um, keep an eye out for Philip Pullman content this year. I will say that. Okay, down here we have um, Book of Swords. These three are, well, these four are used, but these three are used copies of um, the first three Book of Swords books. I heard really good things. I don't know if I'm going to read them now. Then I have The Eye of the Queen by Philip Mann. This is maybe one of the weirdest books I've ever read. And I got it at a little, like, fair thing going on under a bridge. And um, I read it, and it's weird. It's weird sci-fi, um, but it was kind of cool, and I feel like I'm one of the few people who's read that book at this point, so I feel kind of special and elitist. No. <laughs> um, then we have some Warrior Cats books mixed in with some Narnia books. It's fine. And an Animorphs tin, which is fine. Um, we have A Little Life. I think this one is signed as well as um, To Paradise. I think they're both signed. I Oh my goodness. I hated To Paradise. I love A Little Life. It is one of my favorite books, but um, I, I hate it to paradise. You're going to see A Little Life show up. I think I have two other copies. And then we have more Philip Pullman books, my original Golden Compass, or um, His Dark Materials Trilogy, Book of Dust, and A Secret Commonwealth. And then a copy of The Aeronauts Windlass, which is the other series Jim Butcher writes. I will probably read it. I don't know. I'm not super crazy for it. Uh, I just really want him to write more Dresden Files. <laughs> I've heard good things though, so probably I'll pick it up. Before I can get further, so let's talk about these piles so I can move them out of the way. So this is my bookish box edition of the Diviner series, along with some really old entertainment weeklies that I just need to get rid of. Then I have my arc of One Dark Window, and then I got these two as review copies, um, All of Us Villains and All Our Demise. I'm actually going to mail these to a friend who I uh, think will like them a lot. This is just like an extra pile. I <laughs> I don't hate any of these books, um, but we have Prior of the Orange Tree and Paperback. This is the edition I want to read because I feel like the hardcover will be hard to carry around. And then we have The Lost Spells. I love this book, Roski's Book of Delights. I like that one a lot too. Bluettes by Maggie Nelson, Tiger's Daughter, uh, Fortuna, Black Swan, and an extra copy of Iron Gold. I just haven't had places to put these books right now. So yeah, let me clean up this little space a wee bit, and then we'll get a chair in here, and we will start on the sci-fi shelf. Okay, so the chair like barely fits, so let's uh, let's do our best. So up here i do have a bunch of critical row fungo pops let's talk about that real quick and just the fungo pops in general i um 
I bought the, the Critical Role ones because I was getting into them at the time. I'm not a big fan of it now, but I do think these are some of the most beautiful, intricate Funko Pops that I've ever owned. So I do love them for that reason. And then I have my original Avatar Funko Pops. There soon became too many. It's super dusty up here. I almost never come up here. Oh, Momo, you fell. Um, I should dust more. <laughs> There's like cobwebs. Okay, that's kind of gross. That'll be a goal this year to dust my shelves more. I, I stopped collecting because there just became too many of them to collect. But I do have the Cabbage Man, so that's what matters. So we're actually going to start off this side. Um, no, we'll start on this side. Okay, so I have my <laughs> Simon Snow collection right here. So uh, my paperbacks, uh, my American paperbacks of Carry On, which is the original edition I read. And then Wayward Son, this does have um, a slightly alternate cover because he has short sleeves. I'm not going to pull the rest of these out. It's just too hard. Um, then I have my UK paperbacks. This one has an extra um, piece of art in it and my UK hardcover. They're going to hardcover of uh, Any Way the Wind Blows. <clears throat> I have, this is the Barnes & Noble Wayward Son, I think. Yeah, that's the Barnes & Noble edition. I have my uh, hardcover carry on, my regular hardcover Wayward Son, my regular hardcover Any Way the Wind Blows. I think this is... Um, Barnes and Noble and I think this is Indigo maybe um and then I have the UK hardcovers these are the or um do any of these have the I don't know um but these are just without the dust jackets I think they're so pretty this is a Catmere Academy thing that came from bookish box then I have my Vampire Academy series which I love and Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice which I want to reread soon um and it's just over here because I wanted it with vampire stuff then I have some Joe Abercrombie books and I have um, a Brandon Sanderson. I think I have two Mistborn editions there. I have Railway Day Trips. That's from London. Some literary magazines. The Scorpio Sea Tarot um, in between here. I think it's more literary magazines. NW by Zadie Smith. Passenger. Uh, these <clears throat> are just extra copies of the the Deadlight of Education series, which I'm totally blanking on what it is called. The Scalamance. I have my smoke alarm there. These guys. Oh, well, David Sedaris is here just because I like him. Um, these two I did not love, but I love the covers, so I didn't want to get rid of them. It's Bone Crier's Moon and Bone Crier's Dawn, and then this is We All Fall Down, which is a really horrible book for multiple reasons, but the edges are pretty. Okay, and we're just going to go like across like that for these shelves as well, because they were kind of made to be a little bit of a flow. So we have The Stars Undying by Emery Robin. I loved this book last year. It was so good. Uh, the Illuminate Files by Jay Kristoff and, uh, yeah, and Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I really like these. I think Illuminate was my favorite, um, but I did like Gemina and Obsidio as well. They're very shiny. Um, the uh, Space Between Stars, I have not read this yet. It was a book box edition. Um, Winter's Orbit and Ocean's Echo, one of my favorite books of 2022. Phenomenal. Love this book. Went feral for this book. Would die for this book. I It's perfect. I feel like it was written for me. Uh, Seven Devils, another sci-fi I have not read. It was a book box book. And then my Pierce Brown books, I have Red Rising, Golden Sun, Morning Star, I have this art. It came from Illumicrate. I love it. Uh, Iron Cold and Dark Age. I've not read Dark Age yet. Um, I'm a bit ashamed to admit that. I will read it this year, I think. And then I have, uh, ooh, it's a bottle opener, technically. Um, but yeah, it's, it's cute. Okay. Then going over, I have the Phantom Wise Tarot, which Aaron Morgenstern did. And then I have, this came with the Bookish Box Diviner books, I think. <clears throat> then I have my hardcover Secret History. This is Book of Month edition. Uh, the Little Friend by Donna Tart. I picked this up at a used book sale. It is really weirdly, like, shorter than regular hardcovers. Like, look at how, like, thin that is. Um, but I got that for, like, a dollar, so really happy about that. Then we have my Atlas 6 collection. I have read the Atlas 6. I've not read Atlas Paradox yet, uh, but we have my uh, indie edition of the Atlas 6. I have the regular edition of Atlas 6, regular edition of Atlas Paradox, the Barnes & Noble edition of Atlas Paradox. This is the Waterstones Atlas 6, the Waterstones Atlas Paradox, Fairy Loot Atlas 6, the Illumicrate Atlas 6 and the Illumicrate Atlas Paradox. I feel like I've done videos about these different editions already, but I absolutely love the Illumicrate ones. They're just stunning. The, um, the like foiling they use is just like to die for. So 
love that to death. And then I have my Goldsboro editions of All's Villains and All of Our Demise. I really love these books. They're fantastic. And we have A Deadly Education and Last Graduate. These are just the regular editions. And then Golden Conclave or Enclave is Waterstones. I've only read Deadly Education, but I was gaga for it. So I do actually want to read this series probably soon. It'll probably be early this year in 2023. I kind of want to revisit this one because I enjoyed it so much. Moving down, we have, this is the American edition of the Book Eaters, and this is the Illumicrate edition of the Book Eaters. Um, it's pretty, I don't love that, but you know, we'll, we'll live with it. Um, and then I have, this is um, a key for uh, um, the, the uh, spaceship and um, Skyward, so we'll get there. Um, we have The Kingdoms by Natasha Poli, The Binding by Bridget Collins, Cartographers by Peng Shepard. I'm not actually sure if this is more mystery or lit, but I this one does really interest me. These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner, which was their debut novel, I believe. Uh, Steelheart by Your Fight and Calamity. I really loved Steelheart. I have not yet gotten to these two. Every once in a while I consider unhauling it. I'm like, will I read it? I feel like I should give Steelheart another try. I really like that it took place in Chicago. This is a copy of Dune. This is the Waterstones edition. I love these edges. They are uh, some of my favorite edges. I think they're just stunning. Um, yeah. And then I have Skyward, which I really loved when I read it. Starsight and Satanic. And then the collection of Mind Up and then Mind Walker, which I hope to read soon. I feel like I will love this book more than I thought I would. I just saw a lot of good reviews, especially Samantha Shannon was really talking it up. Then going over, we have um, an Addie LaRue art print. This is from Illumicrate. This is a Eros and Psyche, I think, a little, um, what is it called, a plate. And then this is a little Gideon the Ninth candle. It's not near my Gideon the Ninth books, but I needed it somewhere. I also have these um, Gideon the Ninth socks that, again, just needed to be tucked in somewhere. So let me move uh, that. The other stuff can probably be worked around. So here at the bottom, I'll just start here. We have The Whispering Dark by Kelly Andrew. That's the Illumicrate version. Um, I wasn't super excited for it, but I don't know. I'm kind of like, I keep looking at it and thinking maybe maybe I will like it a lot. Um, then I have Lepfona by Atesha Moshvig. Portrait of a Thief. This is the uh, US hardcover. No, this is the Illumicrate hardcover. I love that. That's like the addition they added. I think that is so cute because this is what the uh, original copy cover looks like. So yeah. And then we have all of my Addie LaRue books. So this is the hardcover. This is the Barnes & Noble hardcover, I think. Yeah. And then the indie hardcover. This is the Owl Crate edition, which is probably not my favorite, but you know, we live with it. I have thoughts about Owl Crate. This is some Addie LaRue art. Uh, it's hard to show you one-handed, so I'm sorry. We're going to pass. And then this is the uh, like special edition they put out a year later. This is the, oh man, I have to pull them out because I don't remember. Okay, before we do those, let me show you what's up here hiding. This is The Two Doctors Gorski by Isaac Fellman. I'm really excited for this one. But, so this is the, the special edition. This is... Oh, this is the Illumicrate edition with the silver and it's a little without a sticker on the cover. It's shiny gilded edges. Um, there is like under jacket stuff as well, but we're not going to go into it because again, one handed difficult. Sorry. Um, if you are watching this video and you're like, can she do like an in-depth of like any of these editions? Let me know. I would definitely love to do a video if people are interested. I could show you like all the minute detail on some of my special editions. This is the, um, the Forbidden Planet edition. Uh, this is the Waterstones edition, I think. I think. No, that's just the standard edition. That's it. That's the standard edition. And this is the... Oh, maybe this is... I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know anymore. This one's signed. <laughs> And then I have my UK copies of Vicious and Vengeful, which are the covers I think it deserves. I will say I liked Addie LaRue. It was not my like favorite thing I've ever read, though. Then I have my copy of Song of Achilles that I read, and then I have the Illumicrate editions of Song of Achilles and Circe. This is a picture from Khan. I met two of the actors from Our Flag Means Death. I'm not going to show you the picture, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is one of my prized possessions, so I love it.
really tight. So we have The City and the City by China Melville. I really want to read this one. I have my Murder Bot books by Martha Wells. The Second Sight of Zachary Cloudsley by Sean Lusk. This was a Goldsboro edition. This is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone and Amal El Matar. I love this. This is one of my favorites. It's like, um, it's, it's basically letters being written between two time traveling sapphics. It's great. Um, a long way to a small angry planet and an arc of a close and common orbit. I got this at a charity shop in Brighton. Okay, that's pretty cool. Both by Becky Chambers. Iron Widow by Jiren J. Zhao. I, you know what? I really enjoyed a lot of this book, but the dialogue was pretty crap. Um, Light from Uncommon Stars. I have the arc and the finished copy. Docile, which is one of my favorite books. First Become Ashes. These are both by K.M. Spara. Um, K.M. Spara, if you're watching, which I know you're not, but if you are, please... Please publish another book. I love your books. I have uh, this little star's hollow sign that lights up. It's cute. Um, I have Timekeeper by Tara Sim, Aurora Rising, and The Other Side of the Sky. Then moving over, this is a plate from a Luma Crate. I love it. It is. They had different names. This is like the light or academia one. I love it though. I love it. There's a matching one right down here they're gorge so then i have ship of theseus which is that weird book that jj abrams like worked on that looks like a library book that you read like the text itself but you also read the notes i am so this is one of the few books that actually daunts me it's like this in kane's jawbone but um maybe next year and i have a copy of trust by hernan hernan diaz uh this was a goldsboro edition i don't know i probably will read it cloud cuckoo land by anthony doer i started it i was not in love with it i will go back to it the Embroidered Book by Kate Hartfield. Two Paradise by Hanya Yanakara. This is my Goldsboro edition. Um, I hated this book, but it's here because it's expensive. A Little Life by Hanya Yanakara. This is my signed copy. Uh, the Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Zeki. I want to read this one soon. A lot of these on the shelf, you'll notice, are actually Goldsboro editions. I like that they give lit because I don't pick up a lot of lit on my own. Tenderness by Alison McClode. I really want to read this, but I have to read uh, Lady Shatterly's Lover first. Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. Absinthe by Brendan Bellancourt. The Actual Star by Monica Byrne. And When We Were Birds by Al uh, Ayana Lloyd Bonwo. And then Lear Wife by J.R. Thorpe. I really want to read Lear Wife. That's been pretty high on my TBR for a while. Okay, the stuff on the shelf. Let's do the stuff first. So, um, this is just cute, um... There is tea in here, I think. <laughs> and then I have uh, this. This is empty, but I love that. Uh, this, okay, this is like RuneScape stuff. I don't play RuneScape, but the D&D &D campaign I play in takes place in the RuneScape world. So if you know, you know. And these are ladders from Posty Pete with um, our characters' names on it. And this is something my friend wrote. But I'm just going to move this because moving Posty Pete's a little hard. And I don't want to startle the Chinchampa or anything. So up top, we have Empire of Silence by Chris Christopher Ruccio. I have like on and off wanted to read this book for ages i finally caved and bought a copy so then we have some jeff vandermeer books of city of saints and madmen shriek and finch and the american new releases and then city of saints and madmen in the uk release i love so here's the thing i was like totally in love with this cover for a long time and then they came out with this cover which i'm even more in love with so and i will can i just tell you pulling things out one-handed from such an awkward angle this is probably the hardest part to shelve. Someday I really do hope to have um, easy to access bookcases and the space for them. I have some Max Gladstone books. I have Three Parts Dead and Two Serpents Rise. I have the first October Day books, Rosemary and Rue, Local Habitation and Artificial Night. I was like, I'm not going to buy any more until I read them. I have some of the Expanse books. I have Leviathan Wakes, Caliban's War, and Abaddon's Gate. Those are the first three, and those are three I've read. I love the Leviathan Wakes. It's one of my favorite, and I really enjoyed Abaddon's Gate as well. Um, but Sibyl, uh, Caliban's War was like, okay. But I do have Cibola Burn. I'd like to read that soon. I, Lucifer by Glenn Duncan has been sitting here forever and keeps avoiding the unhaul just by the fact that it sounds like a quick read. The Once in the Future King, Ancillary Justice, The Raven Tower, and Wake of Vultures moving over this is more um this is all lit i think this is my dark academia plate like i was saying and then here we have some tins this has some of the aluma crate bookmarks that i love and yeah anyway that's robin from babel in there and then um more bookmarks i 
keep them there. They're, it's kind of the perfect location. So here we have Plain Bad Heroines by Emily R. Dan or M. Danforth. Uh, my copy of A Little Life that I read. The Books of Jacob by Olga Tokarczyk. I love these editions. It's the only one um, that I have published by um, Fitzcarraldo, but I love how they look. And I do want to read this because she's a Polish author and I am Polish. And then we have some Europa editions. We have Trust or thirst, wow, thirst, beautiful, a beast in paradise, troubling love, which is also by Elena Ferrante, and elegance of the hedgehog by Muriel Barbary. Then we have two from, sometimes I just buy books because they're from like publisher, like specific publishers. Also, I'm so sorry it's dark down here. Hope you can see. This is published, um, I totally forget by who, I'll let you know, but this is where the wild ladies are, and, um, Love in the Big City, which was shortlisted for the Booker, I think, this year. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Fun, funny enough, I've read a Matt Haig, but not this one. <laughs> Remains of the Day and Never Let Me Go by Kazu Ishiguro. I love these both. I think Remains of the Day. I prefer Ka um, Clara and the Sun. This is technically an arc. I haven't read it yet. The Kitchen God's Wife by Amy Tan. I read The Joy Luck Club last year, and I, I loved it. I fell in love with it. Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress by Dai Sejai. I love this book as well. The Mermaid Chair by Sue Monk Kidd is probably going to be a summer read. If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. No, I have not read that. Station Eleven and Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. Um, Fran Ross's Oreo and Hope Neely's Lessons for a Good Life by Carolyn Day. My legs are falling asleep, so I tried to find a more comfortable position in this wee little corner. Like, Look at how tight it is. We have some Neil Gaiman books. These are illustrated editions of American Gods, Anansi Boys, Black Dog, and Monarch of the Glen. And then my copy of American Gods that I... Oh, I guess I did not read this originally, but it was my first physical copy. I bought my copy of Good Omens. Then I have the illustrated Chris Riddell Neverwhere, which I love. Um, two copies of Norse Mythology. <laughs> Another copy of American Gods. Another copy of Neverwhere. And then I have... Um, before we get to this stack, I have a non-Neil Gaiman book. I have Angels in America by Tony Kushner. Then I have back here the little paperback myth markets that I think these are so cool. We have Smoke and Mirrors. Um, I have read that one. Ocean at the End of the Line. Trigger Warning is, I think, the only one I haven't read. Uh, Neverwhere, Stardust, Anansi Boys, and another copy of American Guts. Then we have my anniversary edition of Cinder. And then we have Leviathan, Behemoth, and Goliath by Scott Westerfeld. Let me get. I love. I've never finished Goliath because it wasn't out when I was reading these. I love these. They're World War One like fan fiction, but the one side has like mechas and the other side has like Pokemon. It's so good, and it's illustrated. I think the Octopus Man by Jesper Gibson, and then Space Unicorn, Unicorn Blues by T. J. Barry moving over so i have a sh i'm reading thing um i have another dragon i told you they'd be popping up and then i have this it is just coins here we have my lunar chronicles this is a um a jade a fondly jade city like bookend so we'll move that real quick it was just keeping them flat so we have cinder scarlet i love these new covers by the way i do really like them scarlet cress winter and then my original paperback of cinder and my original paperback of scarlet and i also really like how these guys have like another piece of art when you fold it back and then we just have my hard covers of crest winter fairest and stars above then we have some more literature um oof, okay that's a little easier Sorry, it is so dark. Uh, Four Treasures to the Sky. We have an Irish country doctor, uh, which I hope to read this year. Crossing by Alex Landrigan. Arlington Park by Rachel Cusk. I don't know why I didn't pick up one of her more popular ones. Mrs. March by Virginia Fita. The Wolf Den by Elodie Harper. Daughters of Sparta by Claire Highwood. Catherine of Aragon by Alison Weir. And at the very end is another one. Oh, I really want to read this year. Offshore by Penelope Fitzgerald. We have some poetry right here. This is a graduation from high school gift, actually. And we have, um, this is pretty much my Harry Potter shelf. I don't really um, think about, well, I think about Harry Potter every once in a while because it was a big part of my childhood, but I don't really pick the books up. I um, don't support it anymore because of J.K. Rowling's actions. I just can't 
a personal choice as much as a moral choice on my part, but I do have uh, this edition of Philosopher's Stone. This is not Harry Potter, this is just down here. This is City of Ironfish, Adulting um, by Kelly Williams Brown. This is a great book to gift if um, someone has graduated high school and The Secret History. This is my original copy. And I have my Harry Potter books. Um, I have some more Harry Potter books here and some art books and um, a little travel guide Ooh, in this corner. You probably can't tell. To Coastal Maine. So here, we'll start with these. I have Home by Marilyn Robinson. I really love this book. It was read for a class, but it was fantastic. Landmarks by Robert McFarlane is just phenomenal. One of my favorites. If you are into nature writing, you should read this. And even if you're not into nature writing, but you are a writer, you should read this as well. It has such great things to say about language and words and how words get lost and how words get used. And it's just really beautiful. And then Regency Revolution by Robert Morrison. This was really good too. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So Shrines of Gaiety by Kate Atkinson. This is a Goldsboro edition. Harold Bloom's The Bright Book of Life. This is a book of essays on classic literature. Born to be Hanged by Keith Thompson. I will probably unhaul this. I bought it because it does sound interesting. I was into pirates at the time, but I don't know if I'm going to read it. A book I know I will read and have just been putting off for no good reason is Not Far From Brideshead by Daisy Dunn. I'm a big fan of Brideshead Revisited, so this one is kind of a must. This is an arc of Fox and I by Catherine Raven. Another piece of literature or um, nature writing. The Ron Chernow, Alexander Hamilton bio because I was big into Hamilton <laughs> and shooting Midnight Cowboy by Glenn Frankel. The stack we have Underland by Robert McFarlane, Ghost Ways by Robert McFarlane and Stanley Donwood, The Old Ways by Robert McFarlane. Can you tell I'm a big fan? And I have Night Walking by Matthew Beaumont. I got this when I was at school in London. Late Migrations by Katherine Renkel, and this has some really gorgeous illustrations. Done by the author's brother, I believe. Colson Whitehead's The Colossus of New York. This is fantastic. It is nonfiction, but it is just phenomenal. And I've never been to New York City, but reading this book really placed me there all the same, so it was just great. Autumn Light by Pico Iyer, which is about his summer time in Japan, and it's subtitled The Season of Fire and Farewells. I think he's grieving at the same time. This is A Country Year by Sue Hibble. I got this at a used book sale as well. Is there something in here? Oh, it's got a big plate. I never noticed that before. Barba Arn I R Aaron Reich. Oh, geez. Uh, Nickel and Dimed on Not Getting By in America. This is the 20th anniversary edition. Pandora's Jar by Natalie Haynes. Yeah. I think that's nonfiction technically as well. And of course, I live in the Chicago area, so I have The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. I think it's just like required reading if you live in this area of the world. And this is not nonfiction, this is Train Spotting by Irvine Welsh. An assembly such as this, which is the first in the trilogy about Darcy and D, A Tale of Two Worlds by Michael or Michelle Faber. First, we have World of Wonders. I didn't know how to pronounce her name for a while. I learned it because it was her book of the year at work. Amy Nezakumatatu. I think. Oh, I could be totally wrong. But this is World of Wonders and Praise of Fireflies, Whales, Sharks, and Other Astonishments. This is another one with some really gorgeous art. Um, I promise it does have. Here we go. The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. That book got me through a really interesting time in my life. And then the Neil Kamen Reader. And the view from the Cheap Sheets also Cheap Seats also by Neil Gaiman. We have another copy of True Paradise. I was excited for this one and it's so disappointing I think. Once in Future Witches by Alex Harrow. This will probably be on hold at some point. And then last but not least, Migrations by Charlotte McConaughey. Um, yes. <laughs> Let me put these all away. I will show you my favorite shelf and I will show you my last two stacks and then we will be done. Wow. Okay. Okay. Please ignore some of the mess. But here we have my favorite books of all time. I, yeah, I mean this, this, this revolves around a little bit. So we have uh, my 
Lit Joy editions of Strange to Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares in Other Lands by Sarah Reese Brennan, Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, that's the anniversary edition, The Raven Boys Cycle by Maggie Seawater. You're probably wondering, where is that? Yeah, it's right here. Winter Song by S.J. Jones, uh, Rin Chupeco. This is my uh, U.S. copy of Silver Under Nightfall, and I have it. Um, I have a bookmark in one of my favorite chapters, which is called, um, I think it's called Again, uh, Again or Another. Um, if you know, you know. Then I have my Lock Tomb trilogy, the original trilogy that I read, a copy of Ocean's Echo, and this is my illustrated Empire of the Vampire. Speaking of Empire of the Vampire, these are my last two shelves. It is a bit hard to get them out, so we're not going to completely, but I'm going to show you. It is a V.E. Schwab uh, stack and an Empire of the Empire stack, pretty much so. We have my UK paperbacks of A Darker Shade of Magic. Um, this is some Gallant Art Gallant. This is the Illumicrate Gallant. This is the, I don't know, Waterstones Gallant? Who knows? Um, Vicious, my original paperback. My American hardcovers of Vicious and Vengeful. My American hardcovers of Darker Shade of Magic. An anniversary edition of Darker Shade of Magic. Gallant, some more copies of Gallant. This is a bookish box down here. And then we have um, Owl Crate and then regular hardcover and we at the bottom, like that stuff. That's some Ghibli films. Okay, then we have Never Night in God's Grave. And then we have my Empire of the Empire stuff. So this is the Dimmix paperback, my ARC. This is the Illumicrate edition, the Goldsboro edition. This is the regular hard or it might be waterstones yeah waterstones forbidden planet regular hardcover regular u.s hardcover and at the very bottom my um barnes and noble exclusive edition i have those stacks there i want them on shelves so badly and then of course which i said we will not be getting to today there will be a dedicated video for my classics books they are all in this cubby yes and it actually goes down two more cubbies um, and they're like triple stacked, um, but that is not today. Oh my goodness, that was my bookshelf tour that took me way longer than I even ever could have imagined. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm pleased, I'm happy with it, but um, maybe a yearly bookshelf tour is too much. I won't say that, but it'll be at least a year before you get another, besides the classics. That'll come this summer when I move the bed, and I'm super excited to do the classics because I love showing off my classics editions. But yes, I hope you enjoyed. I will film a proper um, outro. Um, yes. Welcome back if you made it through that. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a lot, um, but you know, sometimes it's nice to have a lot when it's books that you're looking at. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I don't have plans to do another bookshelf tour until I have more space for the books and for myself to stand in between the bookcases, which probably involves me moving and moving out. So it's probably going to be at least 2025, maybe sooner, but I would hazard a guess and say 2025 is probably when you'll see the bookcase tour, mid to late. That's just an assumption. Cannot guarantee it and wouldn't want to guarantee it. However, while doing the bookshelf tour and actually more specifically while editing this tour, I really got the hankering for moving books around and doing a reorganization video. So you should look out for that. It's something I absolutely 100% plan on doing. It probably will not happen for a couple months because of a couple reasons. One is that I want to do an unhaul video and I would like to do that first and clear out the clutter. And two is that I want to go through and clean out my closet. I have to get rid of a bunch of stuff anyways because there's clothes that don't fit me. There are things on shelves that I don't look at anymore. Uh, I want to donate a lot of stuff. I'm not going minimalist but I do feel like I need to do just a major purge because I have not done that in uh, probably about three and a half, four years. And so I want to get through that first before I do the the reorganization because I want to move some books into the closet. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I keep a lot of childhood favorites in the closet and in the basement and in boxes and there are some books on these shelves that I just do not look at a lot that I still love and I want to keep and I want to keep close to me in the closet but I just don't need them on display and I want to make room for new books that are coming out and coming in. And the third thing is that I really want to clean out under my bed. So there is a 
another type of tour video coming later this year probably sooner than the classics video or the reorganization video and that is a board game tour slash unhaul video i want to go through all of my board games that i have talk about them unhaul some and reorganize them it's going to be a packed in video but it's going to be a lot of fun and i'm really looking forward to it and currently i keep my board games under my bed i would like to clean out that space get through the board games, make room for new board games, that kind of stuff. And I wanna see how much room I'm working with. And I just feel like I should do that before I do a huge bookshelf bookshelf reorganization. But when I do the bookshelf reorganization, I plan on filming it because I find those really soothing to watch as well. And there will probably be a little mini tour in it showing you how things are set up. That you can probably look forward to sometime this year uh, in 2023. And um, so that, if you like that kind of video, I would get excited. I'm really excited to do that. And I'm really excited to reorganize things, even though I love how they're set up right now. It's really going to be a game of trying to make more space and more room for books because you can never have too much room for books or too many books. No such thing. And I did just want to reiterate, I am doing a classics collection tour later this year. Expect it probably late spring mid to late spring. I would say hazard towards the end of spring though, maybe even early summer by the time it gets up. I'm so excited for this video. I just, I love going through my classics books. They are some of the prettiest books I own and I love showing them off. So as fun as this is, and this is a lot of fun to do a bookshelf tour, the classics video is just as fun for me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sticking around for like a two and a half, three hour long video. This is intensely long. It is going to take forever to upload. I'm not 100% looking forward to that upload time. It's going to like drag down every other, um, all the other speed in this house. So, um, <laughs> but it will be fun. It'll be worth it. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for sticking with me. I know this is going up a lot later than I intentionally had planned and that my posting schedule right now is really irregular. It's because of being sick and I'm just trying to get back on my feet still, even a couple weeks after I'm officially cleared to work again, uh, COVID and whatever else I have kicked my ass. And, um, I have to now kick its ass. So there's a lot of training involved. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. If you like this content and you want to see more like it, although not another bookshelf tour for a while, uh, please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. You have no idea. Thank you. If you are somewhere cold, I hope you're staying warm. If you're somewhere warm, I hope you're staying comfortable. And most of all, I hope you are reading a great book. I will see you guys next time. Bye.